Uh, before we do so, we will go ahead and engage uh, and, and carry out the land acknowledgement. The Board of Trustees of the Allen Rock Union Elementary School District does hereby acknowledge that the district sit, that the district schools and facilities sit on the traditional lands of the Mawakma Ohlone people, and the and the Board of Trustees further acknowledge with <coughs> respect and reverence the Mawakma Ohlone people tribe of San Francisco Bay Area for their stewardship of these lands. All right, next we'll go ahead and proceed with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please uh, find your nearest flag and face it. Ready, so the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Flag. Flag. United States of America. United States of America. And the Republic. And to the Republic. For it stands. One nation. One nation. Under God. 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 All right, uh, moving on to item 1.02, this is a discussion and modification of the agenda. Are there any requests from members of the board to discuss, to <laughs> modify the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll go ahead and, uh, we will go ahead and proceed as is. It, as is. Um, all right, 1.03, welcome and explanation to audience. Any person may address the board in any item. Uh, uh, on any item on the meeting agenda, persons who wish to speak on the item, on an item on the agenda will have the opportunity to do so when the agenda item is introduced and presented during the meeting. If you wish to speak on the item, on an item on this agenda, please use the raise hand function on Zoom as described above, <coughs> on the above on the, when the agenda item is called. There's a limit of two minutes for each speaker. The board has the right to limit total public comment on any agenda item to not more than 20 minutes. Persons wishing to speak to the board about any matter within jurisdiction of the district but not on this agenda will have an opportunity to speak during item <coughs> 5.1 on the agenda seated below. All right, moving on to item 2.01. We're gonna go ahead and take on item 2.01, 2.02 .02 and 2.03. All as one, given the fact that they are all essentially very, very much related. And so let's go ahead and proceed with Trustee questions. Trustee Chavez, do you have a question? Do you need a motion for all three? Um, at this point, give me a second. Let's let's go ahead and uh, hear it. This is a presentation at this point. So. Let's go ahead and hear the presentation. We'll go ahead and on the first one. I, uh, I'm sorry. On the first one, 201, it's the so we're not going to take that different from the, on a separate motion because the other one is a presentation. 2.01, 2.02, and 2.03 are all dealing with the same issue and can be taken on as one. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So at this point, let's go ahead and pass and turn it over to the administration. Dr. Bauer. Thank you, Board President. Uh, you will have to do a vote on, uh, and, and they all, we check with legal and they all can be one, but just to remind you that there is a vote for 201 and 203, just to remind the board that those are two separate votes. Okay. All right. Thank you for checking. All right. Let's go ahead and proceed. Dr. Bart, do you want to go ahead and introduce the item? Yes. Thank you so much, board president. Um, these are unprecedented times in not, not only for Alam Rock, but also for our uh, state in terms of education. And um, we have um, a tremendous opportunity to do great things for our children, utilizing some of the uh, one-time funds that the state has sent to us. So I'm gonna be asking, uh, Sandra Garcia, uh, Director of State and Federal, and Dr. Diana Ballesteros, Director of Early Learning, and Mr. Rene Sanchez to present to the board this uh, <coughs> all, all of the, the work that Alam Rock is doing on behalf of our students, of all of our students, and utilizing the resources in a way that will increase the opportunity for our children. So, um, I think, um, Ms. Garcia, are you the first one in the presentation? So uh, I'll turn it over to her. Thank you so much. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, I'm not able to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Good evening, good evening, Board President Quintero, um, Superintendent Dr. Bauer, Board Members, Community, Sandra Garcia, Director of State and Federal Programs, and I'm here this evening to talk to you about Expanded Learning Opportunities Plan. So um, we all know about after-school programs, which we call ACES programs, and those are through a grant that we received from the state of California. And during the pandemic, a um, lot of needs, as we all know, rose, um, you know, needs of families uh, and ways to support um, students uh, in our schools. And um, through this was born expanded learning. And I'm, I believe you all remember uh, last spring or even summer sometime, I came to you with a plan for expanded learning opportunities grant. Um, and that was more focused on um, uh, how we were gonna support kids as they were coming out of uh, distance learning and back to school. Um, so this, this one is called Expanded Learning Opportunity Program. And, um, and what it is, is an expansion of what we already know in after school is ACES. So when I refer to expanded learning, um, that includes our ACES programs but it's calling for an extension of um, these services uh, to include um, programs that focus on developing not just the academic, but the social, emotional, physical needs of our students through hands-on learning experiences. Uh, the presentation tonight will share some background on um, expanded learning, uh, assessment of needs and uh, program structure that I'm recommending. So some of the background is that through um, AB 130, um, LEs are asked to offer TK through six pupils, a comprehensive after school and intercessional expanded learning opportunities. Um, we're also asked to provide all students uh, access to nine hours of developmentally appropriate academics and enrichment activities by the year 2025 through 2026, uh, rolling it out um, every year until full uh, expansion in 2025, 2026. Uh, the nine hours includes uh, recess, lunch, and instructional time, as well as the expanded services. And also to develop the ELOP infrastructure so that we can uh, integrate arts, music, and sports programs into the enrichment opportunities for students. So the context of AB 130, um, some of the important components is that, uh, again, we offer uh, the ELO program to all TK through six uh, pupils in the district, um, and that we prioritize service to our unduplicated pupils, which are English learners, our foster youth, and our low-income students, um, that it is aligned, the program is aligned to our ACES program, so we use the standards that are required um, in our current ACES programs, that ACES and ELOP should be considered one single comprehensive program, that we provide no less than nine hours a day of programming, uh, when combined with the instructional day, and uh, that's including intercessions and summer, uh, that we provide uh, programming on all <coughs> school days plus 30 intercession days, which could be summer. Provide before or after school components on uh, one site or multiple sites, depending on the needs of the district. And then again, that we prioritize school sites in the lowest income communities. So I'm showing you this statewide funding source, um, just as an example of some of the funds that have been provided um, as we get to this new opportunity of expanded learning opportunities program. 
So we already have ACES programs that we've had in our schools and uh, that grant funding has um, been available since 2006. And uh, we're fortunate to have a program in every school in our district. As I mentioned before, during the pandemic, we were given uh, ELO um, grant monies and that was more of uh, one-time funds to support our students as they return to school. And then now this is the new pot of uh, funds called Expanded Learning Opportunities Program Funds. And these are scheduled to be ongoing. So in, um, once we learned that we were gonna be receiving these funds, uh, I started gathering uh, information uh, meeting with different groups to gather information <coughs> but on you know, how we we're going to go about this and what were the needs of our district. Um, I had ongoing planning sessions with our current ACES partners to kind of just gauge their um, capacity and interest in partnering with us on this. Um, uh, had alignment discussions with our departments of early learning, our VAPA and SEL departments. Um, we analyzed current site needs, um, you know, including waiting lists that we have at certain sites. Um, just looked at information that we've gathered through our LCAP community forums, our panorama survey, and then I sent out an additional expanded learning parent survey. Um, through all of this, some of the highest needs based on the input is that there are a majority of families that do need the support through 6 p.m. Um, but there's also a high percentage of families that favor just one hour after school of additional support in, in the form of enrichment um, or possibly two hours like enrichment and homework support. Um, parents do favor more enrichment programs during the summer. Um, there is an interest for intercession support and um, enrichment and homework are the highest interest options for families. So uh, the parent survey that I sent out um, kind of gave that information that I just shared with you. This is just kind of the graphs of where things fell. Most people want till 6 p.m. Um, summer enrichment was very popular and then summer academic came second and then uh, a lot of interest for a full day summer program till 5 p.m. And then um, kind of gauged interest on intercession um, and, you know, what that would, if people were interested in that. And this is where um, the idea of having the spring break um, camp came from, which we will be having next week. And we already have um, 320 students signed up for that camp. So very excited about that. Sorry um, to interrupt, uh, Ms. Garcia. Can I just ask one quick clarifying question about these graphs? Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. The, the numbers that are on each graph, the white numbers on the bar themselves, what are those indicative of? So, you know, um, there were, these are all parts of questions that I asked, so they're not going to come up to 100%. They're just um, the parts of different questions that I asked. Um, so I may have asked for options, and there were like five or six options in each, and these were the highest of all of them. So the numbers are the number total number of responses for that particular yes. category? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that question. Um, and then the types of programming, again, the enrichment was the, the most popular and then homework plus enrichment was second in line. And then tutoring and then only homework was the, the fourth. So in gathering that information and talking to different um, partners and um, people, uh, staff in our district, um, I came up with um, some, a program structure that we could follow next year. And again, the details still need to be worked out. So the logistics, the details of how we will do this, but this is an overall, uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, um, general vision of how I see this playing out. 
So um, the vision would be to provide a safe and stimulating environment where students engage in a variety of experiences that support their learning and enrich their lives. The mission would be that the LMROC expanded learning program offers a quality pre-K and school age program during the after school space that exemplifies our district vision of providing excellence through service, perseverance, love, trust, and equity. And then the purpose would be to enhance the school experience for all children during the after school space in alignment with our district LCAP goals and priorities. So again, we already have our ACES programs that run through 6 p.m. and that includes homework, learning support, um, enrichment activities, integrated SEL and supper daily, Monday through Friday. So adding on this piece, the reason why, you know, we have the arrow going back and forth is basically what we would be doing is uh, um, adding on more spaces for more students to be involved um, through some enrichment cycles. And I see those being like six to eight weeks long throughout the year, but this would also be provided Monday through Friday, just as our ACES program are. And we would at some point, everything would be integrated and, you know, students would be able to take advantage of um, the parts of the program that um, they need. So if they need a full program through 6 p.m., then they would stay through 6 p.m. If they wanted to, um, you know, enroll and just be part of the enrichment cycles and have some homework support, that would be an option as well. So this, these are just samples of what the day would kind of look like for the different um, options. So the instructional day plus EL, ELOP would be the instructional day. This is just a sample because not all schools start at eight, but if you start at eight to 2.30 would be the instructional day. They would then have their snack and then they would have enrichment um, and then they would have homework support. And for a TK kinder student, um, since their day is shorter, um, they would go to lunch after their instructional day, and then their program would go from 12 to 5 p.m. So this would be the nine hour day. And of course, if a student had a, a late start kinder, they, they could have the option of having the before school support, which we do provide at, at our schools. Um, intercession camp, and this is the, the structure that we will be following um, next week during spring break. Um, we offer our first uh, spring break camp, and it'll be uh, eight to five, Monday through Friday, and it'll be a combination of uh, enrichment, um, SEL, you know, some literacy type activities, um, and just you know, kind of mostly just fun and entertaining and enriching for students but infused with some type of learning support daily. And then our summer, um, our thought for summer is that uh, we typically have our uh, summer learning support from eight to 12 daily. And then what we'll do is we will offer parents who, who uh, want the opportunity to have their kids stay to five, through 5 p.m. Um, we would offer um, camp uh, from 12 to five with, um, in collaboration with our partners, um, Think Together and YMCA. So then the students would have the option of having both the learning support and then the, the camp from 12 to five. And that is the, the end of my presentation. And I will stop sharing just in case you have any questions on that piece. Uh, no question. Just thank you very much for the presentation and all your work you put into it. Thank you, Trustee Chavez. Um, I did include a, a plan that does need approval so that we can um, move forward with uh, offering these services. Um, and that was included in the, um, the board packet. All right, we'll take that uh, once we're done with the, we'll take that in, in item 2.03. Okay. Once we're done with all the items. Okay, 
I'll go back and we'll do the second now. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Diana Ballesteros and she will uh, be sharing some information with you on universal pre-kindergarten. And the reason why um, she is following my presentation is because we'll be able to offer the nine hour day um, through the ELOP program um, with the plans that she has through universal pre-kindergarten. So um, Dr. Ballesteros. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Good evening, Board President Quintero and um, Superintendent Dr. Bauer and our board trustees. Um, thank you for this opportunity to share about all the, the buzz about universal pre-kindergarten, the UPK um, coming from the state of California. So um, next slide, thank you, Ms. Sandra. So you may be wondering, you know, what is all this UPK? What is happening? And, you know, in about 2000, a group of scientists really got together and, and put together this science saying, you know, this early years really, really matter. And one of those discoveries, you know, was that 90% of a child's brain development is happens by age five. Here it says before five, but by age five. So the other 10% happens afterwards. So this focus on the neuroscientists and the brain and the development really told us that when we were saying, you know, kids need to be ready when they come to kindergarten, it's really before they come to kindergarten. And so part of this, you know, brain um, science is really um, giving us the trajectory in the state of California to move forward and provide more early learning. And I want to just say high quality early learning for our children, because um, many times people say early learning, early learning, but we really have to stay focused on the high quality, you know, and and they also laid a foundation that, you know, environment really matters for these children. They may not have the language, but their brains are ready to learn. Children are born ready to learn. Thank you, Ms. Sandra. Next one. So then um, we had a whole, you know, group of economic scientists who also started looking at this early learning and the brain development that the neuroscience had put out. And um, Heckman was one of the scientists who has dedicated the, the final um, years of his research on early learning and the and why it's so important. So here you can see that, you know, he's added the importance on the return on investment in the dedication we do prenatal, early childhood preschool, and then you see the K through 12 and the J job training. So it really gave us another um, picture of why this is so important to invest. I think, you know, it's been difficult in a sense that, you know, we want instant gratification and that our investment of um, into education, into early education um, returns the investment. But as you can tell, you know, the return on investment really comes at a later time. It really does. You know, um, some of the work has said, you know, it really helps um, with the achievement gap. It really helps um, the productivity of these children once they are in, um, in society. Uh, it really helps them have a... Um, a better outcome in life. And so it's a lifelong investment, um, this um, uh, economic impact of investing in early childhood. So as you see, all this information is coming out and the states are looking at it and education is looking at it. And so really early education prenatal is really that first stage of education. Next slide, please. So here's where we are now, that $1 of investment in early childhood yields $16 return. So I have been in this field long enough to remember when it was $1 and invested in early childhood, the return was $7. But it has been growing, you know, as the science has come out and the science has told us you know, that this is really a, a significant investment in human development to start at the early stages. 
Next slide, please. So here we are. What is UPK? So UPK is really this, this bridge, you know, that really um, unifies, you know, all these different um, entities that have been working in early education. Private, CSPP is the state program, Head Start, and then our universal transitional kindergarten. Some of the points, next slide, please, Sandra. So one of the unique things about universal pre-kindergarten that, you know, I really like is that it is really um, encouraging, I would say encouraging um, all these entities to work together and not be isolated in a single system to become, you know, this one unified system working together. So here it says, you know, the universal transitional kindergarten, um, California state preschool, um, the community base organizations, private preschools, even our family child care homes. And it really is to, to, encourage that every four-year-old, no matter what zip code, no matter what background, every four-year-old will have one year ahead of kindergarten in universal pre-kindergarten. Pre Next slide, please. Yeah. So how do they work together? How do they work together? And one of the key things is they, they align. You know, they all align. If you have all these partners and leveraging on the partnerships, they're all going to be aligned. So they're going to be aligned in a sense that um, it integrates for the first time, you know, these two worlds that have been separate, most of um, education, the, the early childhood education, and then the elementary education. But here with UPK, it's going to unify these two worlds. Thank you. Next slide, please, Sandra. How is it going to be done? And here is, you know, straight from our state of California. It's going to connect um, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. You may hear this P3, prenatal three, um, P through third grade. Um, it's called, you know, variety of ways, but it's it's a mixed delivery system. And the reason. That characteristic of a mixed delivery system has always been um, early childhood education. You know, you have private school, you have public school, you have employee sponsored um, child care. But in this process, it's how do you unify, unify all of them and really with the core intention of serving all four year olds. Um, these four-year-olds, this is the exciting part for Alan Ronk. We have served four-year-olds in Alan Ronk since 2015. Um, 2015, and the way we did it, my, most people say, well, how did you do it if you don't get the ADA, is because Alan Ronk prioritized district funding in this area. So we were able to bring those four year olds since 2015, when legislation, the state legislation say, well, if the LEAs and the districts want to bring in four year olds, they can go ahead and bring them in and start them even earlier. So we have in Alum Rock opened that window to serve those four year olds every year. Next slide, please. Yeah. And these next three slides is just to give you a snapshot of, you know, how we laid the foundation to get to, to UPK. But before UPK was the priority, I want to be very clear that Alum Rock laid this foundation beginning with that one step of, of inviting those four-year-old children into our transitional kindergarten in 2015. So then we had, you can see our history here from 210 um, to 215. Uh, some of the key things was we started out with TK and K combinations, you know, and, um, and by 2015, we had before and after school care like Ms. Sandra um, just shared, but we didn't have enough spots for all the children. Um, this, ELOP is really great because it's going to give that full day for all the children that need it and all the families. 
So that was our, our first little snapshot of our historical timeline. The second one is 215 to 219. I think in your packet, you got our strategic plan that came out for full implementation in 2017. Um, so that's when we began, again, laying this framework for, for what is now a State of California initiative. The quality for all, is the roadmap and the framework that and the pathway that we have followed in Alum Rock. Um, by 2019, it was really excited that we had leveraged so many partnerships in our early learning um, process that 1,172 children had access to early learning. In that mixed delivery of service, um, we found out that there was still a gap. And many of you know that, you know, we have the very unique and innovative Painter Cooperative at Painter School. And it was really because, again, there was families that saying, yes, we have subsidized um, support from the state of California and state preschool, but I can't afford that. I can't attend, you know, if it's $1,600 a month, and the subsidize is 800 for a family. Families were saying, I can't do that. And so Dr. Bauer and I had a great conversation and she says, well, what do they need? I said, they need free. Some of our families need free. And so the painter co-op is free to families who will volunteer in the co-op. Um, next slide, please. And here we come, we're coming into our 2019 and 2023. Um, some of the things that we also established to support families and children, as many of you have experienced, is we had, um, we expanded our family resource centers. We have now four family resource centers. We brought in our partners of Catholic Charities um, and Somos Mayfair has had what they call the flagship um, family resource center at Cesar Chavez, um, which will now move and enhance to be a demonstration site. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and here, as you see in um, 2023, they say this is when um, we have a solid platform in Alamra, a very solid platform, a foundation, Really, we've, how did we do this? We did it with district leadership. We did it with leveraging amazing partners that have like-minded, like values that, that we have in the importance of serving families and children at the earliest stage of human development. Um, we have a great focus in Alum Rock on how you do a holistic system change by serving the whole child, the whole family, and the whole community. So this is what TK California says, you know, is, is the pathway. You can see here, no, uh, number one, this is the preparing stage for all of us. And as I've shared, you know, we are ready because we have TK in every one of our schools. Um, the number, if you go all the way to number five, which is 2025, 20, 26, um, it says finish line. All four year olds can now attend TK. Well, we've opened up that window for more four-year-olds to come this 22-23. It's opened up to May 31st. And the next year, it'll be open to all the four-year-olds. So we will be more ready, more than ready, in this um, map that they have given us. So why here we are at the Early Learning Center, the concept, right? And I know Mr. Sanchez is going to present this, but I'll do the first slides. Um, next slide, please, Sandra. 
This is our quality for all. You all now have a copy. This is a living document that lives on my desk with anything that I do, anything that I write, because it really gave us that framework. It was the work that was done in two, from 2015 to 2016, I think, Dr. Bauer, and launched in 2017. I came on board as the director, the first director of early learning in 2016, and this, this was the, the, um, the roadmap. Thank you, Sandra. Next slide is good. So here I'm just sharing those, those four, um, there were five strategic goals. And as you can look at these, you can see that, you know, our foundation had already began. The framework really had emerged in 2017 um, to align and integrate systems. So what kind of systems, right? So those, the system like professional development, coaching for the teachers, that was one of the systems, curriculum. Um, right now we align the, the social emotional learning from preschool all the way through the fifth grade. The second was to provide an inclusive, equitable, affordable, and universal access. So you can see here that, you know, we were already talking about that importance of equity and giving equity to all families and being inclusive um, of all children in our T4s, TKs, um, in our preschools. The third one was, you know, to address the social determinants. And this really came to vision when we had to deal with, um, you know, the pandemic, right? We saw those social determinants, the basics of those basic needs of food, of diapers, of formula, and those things, and how our family resource centers got together and really address those social determinants. Those are also addressed in all the family resource centers. Um, and number four, one of my favorites is strengthening family school community partnerships. And so really, um, really seeing that our families are a asset. They're an asset for us and they are our partners in the education of their children. So really having them be a part of all the work that we do and um, that strengthening. Next slide, please. So goal five really of quality for all was how do you demonstrate impact and how do you achieve sustainability? Well, the really exciting thing about what's happening in the state of California with the universal pre-K and the universal TK is that it's going to really support us to achieve that sustainability um, and leverage funds and leverage partners who really want to create this system change because it is an educational system change. Um, next slide. And the next slide really just shows you, you know, what are those things that we have done that in the schools um, based on the quality for all that really impacts a change for children. So I know it's really tiny here but we couldn't get it any bigger. But you can see here that we have the alignment of social emotional learning. We have, because of what the data tell us, we have two exceptional language and literacy partners raising a reader. And now we have the, the Christy Yamaguchi Foundation Always Dream in our schools. And so we slowly you know, integrate and embed these in the schools. Um, all the schools have, you know, consultative work from me to go in and support when it's the really young, young children. Um, so this is the impact. This is really, you can see the impact of what we've done. You'll see that our dual immersion thing together, the schools are here, the preschools that we added. You'll see that painter co-op is also here. Um, just to show you some of the activities of impact. Thank you. And then I turn it over to um, Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Rene Sanchez. Thank you, Dr. Ballesteros. Yeah. Yeah. Rene, yeah. I mean, Mr. Sanchez, sorry. Can we ask a question now of Dr. Ballesteros or should we wait till the end with you regards know. to her portion? Go ahead. Ask. Go ahead. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, so thank you, first of all, um, Dr. Ballesteros. And 
I really wanted to um, just ask a question that, that kind of zooms in a little bit on the a term that you used, holistic. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something I think that we do here in Alum Rock because we choose to do it, but also because in some sense you could use the term we're forced to do it. Like the families that we serve and the conditions of our district are such that we have to take a, a holistic approach and look at all the different domains of what's going on in families in order to try to get to what we're charged with, which is academic success. But there's all these other, again, holistic factors to consider. So th with that being said, I'm wondering, um, you know, for a lot of our families, a lot of our youth, they have experienced trauma, whether that might have been a, you know, maybe a traumatic immigration Mm -hmm. um, experience or family issues or some tra traumatic experience in the community. And we know based on what you said, and we just know that, you know, that at that age, the brain is a sponge. And so we know how the impact of trauma, um, how that affects the wiring of the brain basically at that early age. And so I'm wondering, this is question one, well, number <laughs> one, um, to what extent is kind of having that trauma informed lens integrated into our overall approach with our younger children? I think it's something that we obviously should have for all of our mm -hmm. students because you know the experience doesn't stop at third grade. Um, but just to what extent is a kind of a trauma informed lens integrated or overlaid over our approach? And then um, back to the word holistic, utilizing this approach that you've presented to us um, if you could just maybe touch on the long-term or longer-term impact on the, co the community. You talked about, you know, having to serve the children and the community in this holistic approach. So by doing this, by, by you know, engaging in or, or use, utilizing this approach, how is that impacting our, you know, not only our children as students, but the overall community and the families that we're serving? So those are the two questions, if hopefully they're clear. Yes, so, and if they're not, just remind me. So the <laughs> first one is the trauma-informed. So one of the other things that, you know, that happened in Elm Rock is we have probably one of the only districts with the social emotional learning department, which is really wonderful. So that social emotional learning department, yeah, we partner together and talk about you know, certain families, but they've also done an amazing um, series of trauma-informed that's been open to all the teachers and all the directors and all the coordinators. It's been a, an ongoing six series. Um, what we did for the younger children, Trustee Bejarano, we um, did a specific trauma uh, series of three for those T4, TK um, teachers invited the K teachers, the first, second, and third grade teachers. We did it, we ran it twice in our collaborative Thursdays, you know, which is a smaller groups. And then we did some professional development. And so those were very focused with our partner, the new teacher center out of Santa Cruz that has also been working with our transitional kindergarten since 16 on um, mentoring and coaching and building teacher leaders within the Alum Rock School District. So that's, did that answer the first one? Yes, it does. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that, that we are keeping that in mind when we're taking that approach. I mean, I knew it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's good to hear more specifically how it's being implemented. Okay. So that was question one. Thank you. Okay. Now, question to the holistic impact. I think I'm going to go back to the Heckman studies on the holistic impact, because in the studies that they have done where children did attend early learning um, in other studies, you know, in different parts and different states, they have seen, I think now the oldest study the children are, well, I shouldn't say children, the adults are 45 years old. And so those, those um, studies now show that those, there was less crime in, in that study um, of, you know, that started then. There was more predictive, positive social productivity of those now adults. There was um, a very citizen commitment to, to giving back to society. And, and so 
I think it's that return on investment, Trustee Bejarano, right? That it takes a long time. I mean, they did the those um, preschool studies, you know, in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And now those children are 45. And now they're seeing the return on investment. Things like less divorce, you know, more participating with their children. Their ch- now they're looking at their children of these generations of these studies. And these children are more apt to go to school or that to finish high school, to go on to college. Okay, thank you very much for those responses. I think it's very helpful for me and hopefully others to just keep in mind the context of not only the, the short-term impacts of any decision we make, but you know what we're trying to do down the road you know, as, as benefits to, to our district and to our community. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ballesteros. Um, and a, as you've heard over the last few minutes, um, you've heard a lot around the research and the data regarding the impact of early learning education has not only on children, but the entire community. Um, this is why we bring this innovative opportunity to uh, you today. Uh, we feel this is important. We feel this is critical. This is something that's gonna benefit our entire community. Next slide, please. This is a massive investment for our kids and the entire Alamara community. We have always been pioneers in creating opportunities for our families. Um, the Early Learning Center is one more step to ensure that all children in Alamara will walk into our schools healthy, physically and mentally, and well equipped with the foundational social emotional capacity and skills to help them be resilient and thrive. Um, you know, we are providing, as Dr. Ballestero shared with you earlier, we are providing bits and pieces of this throughout our district, but we wanna be able to provide something that is comprehensive and that is serving more of our students. Next slide, please. As you can see from the images here, right? This is some of the work that's already happening. Um, and a reminder, right? Starting early for our students is ensuring success and their ability to complete to compete for jobs of the future. We wanna provide them with those opportunities. Um, we wanna provide them with the skills to ensure that they will be able to compete you know, in the Bay Area and be part of the workforce of the future. Next slide, please. We heard loud and clear from the community, the needs of families for preschool and extended day opportunities for our youngest students. We heard in the facilities repurposing committee this was some of the feedback that was given. Uh, we heard through our strategic planning committee um, from various members of the committee. Um, this was some of the feedback that was given. Um, focus groups, other partners have shared with us. This is what the community continues to ask for, right? Those opportunities for preschool, um, for extended day, for more students. There's just not enough of that throughout our district and in our community. And we heard this again in our LCAP forums. So this is not something that is new to us. This is something that the community has continuously brought back to us as important, as critical uh, for uh, the families. And so that is why we are um, looking to start this initiative. Next slide, please. What will we provide in the Early Learning Center at Cesar Chavez? Uh, we will provide high quality research based prenatal through uh, five year old model. Uh, we will provide a strong, innovative, unique partnership of public and private providers. Uh, we will provide a platform for early childhood education and systems change for the benefit of children, families, and the community. Um, this is not, you know, this is not something that is um, only going to impact those children participating there, uh, but their brothers, their sisters, their parents, right? It's a comprehensive approach. Um, next slide, please. So following the state's vision for early learning and their master plan for early learning and care, we are looking to be innovative in providing a space where our youngest learners have the resources and services needed for them to thrive. This space provides a comprehensive approach to not only support the children, but also provide opportunities for parents as well. You know, as you can look from the list here, this is just a small sample of 
what we will have in the campus, right? Child care, preschool, infant through kinder programming, extended nine hour day, professional development, um, not only for the teachers, but opportunities uh, for the families as well through our family resource center, uh, parent trainings. Um, we have a preschool assessment center they're located as well and a social emotional learning department that will be supporting our students as well. So as you can see, this is a well thought out approach uh, with all the elements necessary for our students to be successful. Next slide, please. We can't do this alone. So we are looking to partner with Kidango, who has a long history of success in serving our youngest students. Here are some of the facts, right? 40 years of experience serving families. They're currently serving over 4,000 kids daily in the Bay Area. They are operating over 50 childcare centers. Uh, they provide a rigorous learning environment. They provide behavioral and mental health services as well. And this quote from, from Kadango themselves, giving love, nutrition, and learning opportunities needed to develop the early language, math, and social emotional skills. Uh, next slide, please. So I would like to wrap up um, this presentation and ask for your support uh, for the redesign uh, into the Charlotte Chavez Early Learning Center. I leave you with this quote, um, you cannot make people learn, you can only provide the right conditions for learning to happen. And that's what we are trying to do here um, in Alam Rock, um, in Cesar Chavez. Uh, we wanna be the pioneers, we wanna be the innovators, we wanna provide those opportunities for our kids and the community. So we humbly ask for your support. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you for that presentation. Uh, and then, um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, public comment. At this point, we'll go ahead and uh, take public comment on any of, of the items that were heard, 2.01, 2.02, 2.03. If you wish to speak, please indicate by raising your hand. Hello, Board President. We currently have six speakers. First speaker is Carla Landon. Ms. Landon, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Uh, buenas tardes. ¿Sí, ¿Sí me escuchan? Sí, lo escuchamos. Ok, uh, mi nombre es Carla Landín. Yo tengo un estudiante en el distrito de Lambrock y soy parte de, de Empuje. Y um, he estado escuchando a la Junta ahora de lo que están proponiendo, pero estoy también aquí um, para pedirles que piensen también en soluciones alternativas antes de aprobar el, el plan que sea nada más um, que apoya a algunas, a, a algunas personas y no a todos. Um, por ejemplo, um, en, en, si pudieran pensar en diversas soluciones como, um, por ejemplo, diversas soluciones inmediatas que puedan dar soluciones inmediatamente a mediano y a largo plazo para evitar el cierre de las escuelas o la venta de espacios o la pérdida de estudiantes más que todo. Um, también qu quisiera pedir que hubiera una línea del tiempo clara para crear un proceso como con fechas para poder tomar esas acciones. Um, y que haya suficiente es, uh, espacio de tiempo para que los padres y, y estén involucrados y, y puedan participar en, en esas decisiones tan importantes. Uh, por ejemplo, por lo menos unos 24 meses de anticipación, pa, porque es una decisión muy importante. También um, para pedirles soluciones alternativas um, para que sea un ganar-ganar para las familias y los alumnos, como un modelo híbrido en las escuelas, como para la educación infantil y la, la preservación de los alumnos que puedan um, coexistir y, y compartir el espacio, um, porque siento que, que es lo más importante no tener pérdida de los alumnos, por lo mismo que están hablando, para que su salud mental no sea afectada. Um, es todo. Muchas gracias. Carlos, I'm not sure if you. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Mr. President, I can't quite hear what Mr. Capaldi is saying.
Can you make that? Can you make that announcement in the Spanish room? Thank you, Carlos. Our next speaker is Saul Ramos. Mr. Ramos, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Bauer. Uh, my name is Saul Ramos, Quick Executive Director, along with Victor Vasquez at Somos Mayfair. As you have learned for many years, we have journeyed together. We have built a partnership on a common vision to serve the children and families of the East Side. And it is on that principle and mission that I'm here today. At Somos, we want to see a thriving early learning center with universal preschool access because this really fulfills a promise to this community. It will be a strong cornerstone of future success and a pillar of justice for an equitable education system. Access to preschool, infant and toddler care and after school activities allow for economic opportunities for working parents. And that is a key strategy in this long recovery process ensuing the pandemic. We have worked together to envision and build a brighter future for our little ones. And we stand behind that vision proudly. However, we also wanna ask you not to forget about the children and the families that under this recommendation are losing their learning home. It is with them in mind, the most impacted, that in addition to consider this early learning center, that we ask you to think about alternative solutions for a hybrid utilization of the space so we can ease the challenges that will arise for working families and for teachers. We do want you to consider a broad community engagement policy to guide us administrators and partners to build a culture of deep, deep community engagement and hold us accountable. It is time for this and develop a transitional plan to support students to ensure that the most vulnerable families and children are adequately supported and welcome into new schools. And, you know, given the times, and, and Superintendent Bauer speak, spoke about this, for, for Alan Rock to really take a, take a strong position in response to the Heisen crisis. Uh, these times do require for the district to engage in different alternatives. And as you know, so much will remain committed depending uh, despite the board decision. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Our next speaker is Dilsa Gonzalez. Ms. Gonzalez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Dilsa Gonzalez, and I am a parent of two students at Allen Brock and a community organizer. Today, I'm here as a parent community member and as a person that has been in these meetings for the last seven years. And I understand some of the decisions that you have, that you have to make um, are hard decisions and some really great. Today, we heard an amazing program coming in within in a proposition. However, this is comes as um, this comes as expense of, of the students that are already currently there. They're going to be displaced. Today, I put myself in your shoes and the last seven years have taught me that parents get angry and we lose the trust in the district because we're not being engaged in this kind of decisions. The decisions that today you're making is not only gonna be um, affecting parents, but our students. The students that have been going through a difficult time during the last two years because of pandemic. Their parents have lost their jobs. They have their, um, their extremely low income and every month they're in the virtue, they're gonna be displaced. They're also um, being impacted by losing their families to death and to suicide. Think about that, the emotional damage that our kids have. But also think that we, we, if we do think about alternative solutions where we bring our families and communities in, how powerful will that? How powerful will be if we organize and work together with nonprofits, with students and staff to find solutions to displacement, 
to find solutions in creating a path on outreach to enroll more students in our classroom, to find solutions that are possible to work as a team and go and get more funding through the county, state, and even the city. Today, you guys have a decision to displace hundreds of students, but we, we don't have to go that route. So think alternatively, think about how we can work because I would have been sitting with you. I know the best way is to engage community and be part of that, of that solution. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Our next speaker is Rose Mary Muñiz. Ms. Muñiz, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Ms. Muñiz, the system is telling me that you have an older version of Zoom and it's not letting me open up your mic at this time. Uh, if you can upgrade your Zoom and come back, we can uh, have you, we can have you take, uh, we can take your comments. Jose, or can she also call by phone? Yes. And, and the number is, should be provided in the agenda. In the meantime, can you move to the next speaker? Yes, our next speaker is Martha Gamboa. Martha, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Hello, my name is Martha Gamboa. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can yes, hear you. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for this meeting. And also, I would like just to put this in perspective that if we can also support parents and children with special needs. Um, I We work at Kirango. We also work with children with special needs. And we have several families requesting support for parents as well as children. So that is only my comment that I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campoa. Our next speaker is Emeteria Maciel Lopez. Ms. Lopez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Hola. Yes. Sí, ¿me escuchan? Sí, eh, si desea dar comentario, sí podría cambiarse al canal de español, por favor, para que le traduzcamos. Ok. Eh, ¿Ahora sí está bien? Todavía la, la escuchamos aquí. Por favor, cambie su canal a, al ah, de español. Ah, eh, Lo tengo en español, no sé por qué no, no me escuchan. Sí, sí, la, la escuchamos. Ok, yo, yo también quiero comentar lo mismo que dijo la, la persona anterior. Uh, soy una madre de familia del programa Quindango y creo que sí es verdad que tenemos, tenemos, eh, tenemos como forma de apoyo para nosotros, los padres de nuestros hijos. Por pre, preschool, creo que es preschool. Es todo. Gracias. Gracias, Emeteria. Our next speaker is Veronica Amador. Ms. Amador, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Great. Thank you. Hi, and good evening. My name is Veronica, and I am a 
parent leader with Mbuhe. And first of all, I want to address that my comment is based on a co-creation of solutions in which Somos, Mayfair, and parents for Cesar Chavez came up. I am here in solidarity with parents from Cesar Chavez to support those decisions and solutions they created. Somos, Mayfair, I provided them the space and listened to their worries and supported them as well um, and stand strong with them as parents. And one is develop a community engagement process and policy that focuses on racial equity. Um, in the Allen Rock War, it must adapt a community engagement policy to involve parents, students, stakeholders, and staff in policies or changes that affect the closing merges or restructuring of um, Allen Rock schools. This policy must include provide data, education, research, information on external and internal factors leading to this decision. Also having alternative solutions. Parents are asking uh, for a resolution that creates a win-win for current families and students, a hybrid model in which the vision of early childhood education and the preservation of current students can coexist and shape sp and share space. As a parent, my worry is that just like the parents at Sergio Chavez and Amatson, we're not being involved in decisions or re uh, and the report proceedings of schools or others that will be having the same issues. This is not the first time nor it's going to be the last time and parent voice can no longer be excluded from the decision table. Co-creations of solutions take time, resources, and time. I encourage Dr. Bauer and the, uh, and the Allen Rock staff and the board to work together with parents in any decision making. Transparency, accountability develops into trust are key to parent engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amador. Our next speaker is Jessica Mendoza. Ms. Mendoza, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good afternoon. Um, as a parent with a special needs child who is currently in Kendango, I am very, very grateful for early education. Um, he does preschool and he does special education at the moment. And I can see how much he has benefited benefit from it. I would love it if he can continue that and it be welcome to other families and needs. However, I do think that maybe more um, support for the parents so that we can learn how to educate properly our children with special needs so that they can grow up in society and not be excluded from any activities. And once again, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mendoza. Our next speaker is Yara Hidalgo. Ms. Hidalgo, uh, Yara, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening, my name is Yara Hidalgo. I am the parent of a toddler. I support the expansion of childcare and preschool in the district because as a single mother of a four-year-old boy, finding an affordable childcare center was my challenge until I found space at the um, Linda Vista Kidingo Center in November of 2020. Throughout my search, I had trouble finding something that I could afford. It took a very long time to find a program that met my needs as a working mom. When I returned from my maternity leave, I had um, no other choice than to find a babysitter on my own. She cared for my son for four months until she could no longer watch him. Watch him. I had a weekend to figure out who I was going to leave my baby with so that I could show up to work on Monday. I wept for the helpless situation I found myself in. I went from babysitter to babysitter and this is not what I wanted for my son. If I had the opportunity to enroll my, my child as an infant toddler, I would feel at peace knowing that he was being taken care of at a facility where he was learning and developing his social skills. The consistency of taking him, taking him to a child care center where I know he would be loved, taught and cared for would relieve me from much necessary stress, let alone how significant and valuable of an educational experience this would have been for my son at such an early age and what this would do for his academic success in the future. This is why expansion of infant child care centers are very, very important and very much needed in our community. Thank you. 
Thank you for your comments, Ms. Hidalgo. Our next speaker is Olivia Ortiz. Ms. Ortiz, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Sí, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Olivia Ortiz. Soy una madre de la escuela César Chávez. Uh, creo que todo este cambio es algo muy, muy bueno para, nuestro, para nuestros niños. Este, la educación temprana, sin duda, es algo que se necesita aquí. Uh, la razón de que yo estoy dando comentario es porque uh, creo que la forma que están haciendo estos cambios es están enfocando en, los, en todo lo que... Lo que uh, en lo, en, lo mejor, en lo mejor que va a salir este, este cambio, pero no, no, no han mencionado el impacto negativo que va a causar a cientos de niños que van a perder su escuela. Um, es muy triste, la verdad, um, que todavía yo ya tengo como unos 10 años aquí en, en el distrito y es muy triste escuchar, saber, ¿verdad?, que hacen procesos sin incluir a la comunidad. A uh, nosotros, yo como, no, no, hasta ahorita no encuentro un padre en la escuela de Sar Chávez que, que haya sido involucrado en este cambio, en este cambio en la escuela, uh, desafortunadamente toman decisiones personas que no van a ser impactadas sobre esto. Creo que es algo que me gustaría mucho traerlo a todos ustedes, a todos los miembros de la mesa directiva, como al staff del distrito. El involucramiento de la comunidad es muy importante y también de los padres. Uh, creo que deben de buscar otras soluciones, soluciones donde, donde pueden beneficiarse las, uh, los dos lados. Uh, hay cientos de niños que van a perder su escuela y es muy triste. Nuestros niños han, han pasado por mucho ahorita que estuvo esto de COVID y regresar y, y regresar a la escuela y, y saber que van a perder su escuela es algo muy triste. Espero que puedan de verdad tener un proceso claro y transparente para que nosotros como padres tomamos decisiones, decisiones importantes que van a afectar a nuestra comunidad, ¿no? Que de verdad este proceso sea, eh, que sea incluido la comunidad, los padres de esta Chávez. Estoy pidiendo esto y espero que que escuchen, um, que, que hagan un proceso donde de verdad nos incluyan a nosotros, donde busquemos soluciones alternativas, porque yo sé que se pueden encontrar. Simplemente tiene uno que tener. Gracias por sus comentarios, señor Ortiz. Our next uh, speaker is David Vivanco. David, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself when, the, when you begin speaking, the timer will be. Good evening. My name is David Vivanco. I am a parent of two students in Alam Rock, and I have a two-year-old that will benefit from the early education programs y'all proposing today because I live just in front of Cesar Chavez. But that doesn't mean I support our current students having to move from their school after all they've been through through the pandemic. This is why I'm here supporting and offering some alternative solutions. Parents are asking for a resolution that creates a win-win current family and student, a hybrid model in which the version of early student education and preservation of our current students can co coexist and share spaces using or leasing the other spaces and lands for housing or leasing other spaces such as Maxa to look local organizations that provide services to the community. Establish programs that support youth and parents such as sports, mental health, and enrichment class. Also trying to seek um, city, state finance and COVID funds to return to the school. Offer services with good capacity that competes with charter schools such as after school programs and most important uh, recruiting and preservation of families. Allen Rock should share their annual plans, goals, and statistics for recruiting new families back to school. Allen Rock should explore, explore resolutions and st strategies to address the displacement of families in the East Side and in Mayfair. <laughs> Work with plan-based organizations to change policies and fundings to Ensure long-term housing is available to families and tenants, right protection policies, and next. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Ivanko. Our next speaker is Sofia. Sofia, you have two minutes. 
Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, so I am a parent here at Chavez Elementary. And I mean, as you guys know, this is kind of very disappointing news to hear about, you know, the school being changed to a Kerengo. I mean, you know, I don't mind sharing with them, but I mean, why choose this school out of all schools to do so? Um, there's other schools and if it's, you know, for money wise in the long run, I mean, we can always share with them. The school's big. We have a big field that can be, you know, used. It's not being used now. There's so many other alternatives that we can take, you know, instead of removing the students that are, that are already here. Um, just please consider that, you know, I mean, it's just not fair that we, we got such a short notice of all this and in so little time, we already have to relocate and find somewhere else to go. I mean, it's not fair for working parents. We're all working parents, you know? A lot of us can't even bring our children to school. We have our parents bring them and it's just not fair. So, I mean, just, you know, just think about that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your comment, Sofia. Our next speaker is Andrea Portillo. Ms. Portillo, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Um, good evening, members of the board and Superintendent Bauer. Uh, my name is Andrea Portillo and I am an ARUSD alum and the organizing and policy manager with Somos Mayfair. Um, I wanna uplift the comments of the parents who have spoken before me. And while I acknowledge the difficult situation the school district is in, I urge the district to think strongly about the last recommendation that has been shared, which is re to respond to the housing crisis um, by supporting and exploring community-led solutions that address the root causes of the low enrollment we are experiencing today. It's no news to you um, that our students and families are being pushed out of our schools and communities due to historical housing segregation policies, increased cost of living, current threats of eviction, displacement, and a general lack of access to affordable housing options that lead to long-term home ownership. The data also shows us that those most vulnerable to displacement in San Jose are women and children, especially those in women-headed households. SOMOS has been involved in advocating for permanent solutions to keep families from being displaced in San Jose, which is directly related again to our levels of enrollment. We have worked on tenant rights and protections for renters, advocated for more affordable housing, and are currently working on a community opportunity to purchase act policy with the city of San Jose's housing department that would allow us to preserve and expand our affordable housing stock, preventing displacement when properties are sold and creating a pathway to ownership. We too are calling on the city and county to invest time and resources to anti-displacement strategies and solutions that keep our children and families housed and in schools. Until we begin addressing the housing crisis, we will continue to be faced with tough decisions that at the end of the day impact our students and children the most. We welcome the opportunity to collaborate with the district to advocate on behalf of our schools and families. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Portillo. Our next speaker is Leticia Matz. Leticia, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Norma Pamatz y soy madre de un estudiante de Allen Brock y miembro también de Empuje. Como madre, entiendo las necesidades de una educación temprana para nuestros hijos y un espacio para que esto, para que esto pase. Pero también entiendo que podemos encontrar soluciones en común que apoyen a todos los estudiantes. Por eso pido que se cree un comité de toma de decisiones, incluyendo los estudiantes y los padres y CDO, Organización de Base Comunitaria que dan poder real a los padres para apoyar y elaborar el plan real en cada sitio escolar. 
apoyar a los estudiantes con el cambio y su bienestar socioemocional, planificar que, abo que abor aborden el impacto del proceso y las decisiones en las familias y los estudiantes, crear um, soluciones que no cambien a los estudiantes de escuela, a escuelas para que puedan construir una comunidad y consistencia a largo plazo. Por ejemplo, espacios donde nuestros hijos reciban salud mental, círculos restaurativos y otro tipo de apoyo para abordar los cambios que enfrentarán. Piensen en las soluciones de transporte necesarias y prioricen a la comunidad que camina. Y al igual que todos los padres de aquí, creo que podemos llegar a soluciones en todos los géneros tales como soluciones alternativas. Los padres están pidiendo una resolución que creen ganar para las familias y los estudiantes actuales. Un modelo híbrido en el que la visión y la educación infantil y la preservación del alumnado puedan existir y compartir el espacio y no compartir un espacio. Establecer programas que apoyen a Gracias por sus comentarios, señora Pamans. Our next speaker is Camille Janice Fontanilla. Ms. Janice Fontanilla, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening, uh, Alan Rock Board Trustees and Superintendent Bauer. My name is Camille Janice Fontanilla, and I share my remarks tonight as both a beneficiary of Cadengo programs for my children as well as someone who has co-created much of these programs and visions alongside you over the last decade. This is not an easy time for our school district in Alum Rock. Um, and what I'm learning more and more in my new role is this is not an easy time for school districts across the state of California. And as I know you're uh, facing immense macro pressures, all I can hear today is that you all are in a very unique position to continue to build with the community um, to continue to listen to these parents, to stand with them, to find mutual wins. And now that I have a, a broader view of the state of education in different communities, I am saying to the school board that you are in a very unique position, that not many of these school boards have the depth of relationship, the longstanding partnerships that all of you have. And so I really hope tonight, irrespective of the decision that you make, that you really listen to the openness, the willingness of your partners, of your residents, and really think about how to center students, um, both the incoming early education students that need these services, but also the students that are there now who have just you know, been deeply impacted by immense pressures over the last couple of years and who needs to sustainability and stability. Um, and in whatever way I can, in my personal role, you know, stand with you in partnership, as I know these are very difficult times, but our families deserve that from all of us to work together. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Janice Fontanilla. Our next speaker is Josefina. Josefina, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Mi nombre es Josefina, soy mamá de dos, de dos niños y a mí no me gustaría que desalojaran a nuestros hijos de la escuela porque ya tenemos mucho tiempo trayéndolos aquí a la escuela y pues se nos hace muy feo de que nuestros hijos sean desalojados de César Chávez. Y pues mi niño está, mi niña está muy triste y mi niño también porque pues van a ser desalojados de César Chávez y es muy difícil para llevarlos a otras escuelas porque pues habemos muchas mamás es que no manejamos y pues para irnos caminando a, a esas a otras escuelas es muy difícil. Ah, es todo lo que quiero decir y pues les pediría de todo favor de que no desalojaran a nuestros hijos. Gracias. Y aquí hay más mamases que quieren dar su opinión. Sí. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Porfiria. Estoy aquí en la escuela César Chávez. Este, estamos más padres. 
con pues mucha tristeza por lo que está pasando, ha sido una escuela de nuestra comunidad y en realidad 17 años pues es algo grande que tiene uno que perder. Ahora César Chávez lo llevaremos en el corazón todos porque fue una escuela muy importante para la comunidad y los padres. E incluso para los niños porque participé en la escuela y yo miré las caras felices de los niños. Ahora en cierta forma escucho las voces de los padres en cómo los niños se sienten tristes, llorando por los cambios tan importantes que se van a realizar y que acaso nos estamos dando cuenta porque no, no nos comentaron acerca de lo que estaba pasando en el área de nuestra comunidad con nuestra escuela. César Chávez es nuestra César Chávez y la queremos mucho y vamos a estar siempre todos unidos aquí con los niños. Gracias. Gracias por sus comentarios. Our next speaker is Yesenia Cruz. Ms. Cruz, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Yesenia Cruz. Uh, I think it's bad that you guys want to or consider to close this school down and make it a kindango. As is, in a five radius distance from this school, there is already six kindangos, and we don't need another one. We do have a kindango right next to Cesar Chavez, and we don't need to make all Cesar Chavez into a kindango. A lot of our students are really upset and sad on how this came about, that they're trying to come turn this into a Kendango a daycare. It's a huge school that we can share with plenty of other students. We could share with little kids. I, a lot of parents will really appreciate and if they do share it, that they could bring their little infants and their kids here as well. A lot of kids as well and their parents have to walk here. You, um, you have to consider that there's a lot of children who have to walk. We do live in a low income community. There is a lot of parents who can't afford a vehicle or can't afford more than one vehicle to bring their kids here. A lot of parents here as well have their, their parents. So their grandparents are bringing them to school and pick them up. They're not gonna be able to walk to another school. And another concern as well is San Antonio is on the list of closure. So what's gonna happen if you turn this into Kidango and then you go and close our San Antonio? Where is our kids gonna land at? I mean, keep giving our kids the education that they have, that they're comfortable in the school they're, they're at. As well, we just are really ending COVID and you guys, we showed our children how to keep a distance and now we want to put more than 40 kids in a classroom in a different school we had 260 students in Chavez there's 280 in San Antonio how many more kids can you fit in San Antonio and Lucha is already there sharing a campus with San Antonio says that Chavez is a huge school with who we can share it with plenty of other people thank you Thank you for your comments, Ms. Cruz. Our next speaker is Justin Triano. Justin, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Duncan. Um, yeah, tell them how you feel. Uh, there's so much space behind the school. I'm nervous. Tell them how you feel. I feel sad that they're going to be shutting down the school. There's so much space around the school. You can take out the parks because we normally use the big one. Um, please going? don't, don't, please don't close it. There's so much space behind the school. How do you feel about going to a new school? I, I don't want to go to a new school because it, there, I'm gonna meet new friends. I'm gonna miss all my friends. There's, I love my teachers, my RSP teachers, my city or teachers. Um, I'm very sad that I have, I have to leave them behind and go to a new school. So please don't close the school, please. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for your comments. Our next... Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Reina de los Santos. Reina, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. 
When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Sí, hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. ¿Pueden escucharme? Bueno. Buenas tardes. We can hear you. Carlos. Bueno. Yes, please. ¿Me escuchan? Hola. I don't think she... Hola, buenas tardes. Go for it. ¿Pueden oírme? Andrés, you might want to explain to her because she can't hear him. Señora Reina, por favor. Uh, Hello. Señora Los Santos, por favor, uh, tiene que oprimir el, el botón que dice español. Hay una... Sí, buenas tardes. Sí, sí me escucha. ¿Sí me escucha? Creo que no, no me pueden escuchar. Uh... Uh, she says that she can't hear us. Hola. Sí me escucha. Es miren. Señora Los Santos. Hola. ¿sí me escucha? Buenas tardes. ¿Pueden oírme? No. Uh, sí me escucha, señora Los Santos. She, she doesn't hear us. Hola. I can hear her just fine. It, do the yeah, other trustees hear not hear her? We, all, we can all hear her, but she can't hear us. Señora Reina, le escuchamos. ¿Nos escucha usted? All right, uh, can we move on to Silvia Gonzalez and we can go back to Senora Los Santos after? Ms. Gonzalez, you have uh, two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you get, begin speaking, the timer will begin. <coughs> um, hi, good afternoon. My name is Silvia Gonzalez. I have a child at Cesar Chavez. Um, I was really sad to learn from him that the school was gonna close. I know there was a meeting um, the day before he learned that the school was closing, um, which I couldn't attend because it was a five and I have to work, but I didn't know it was about school closure or else I might like ask to get up early from work. So it was really sad and he's really sad too that he has to move schools, that he's not gonna be able to see his friends. He's a fourth grader. So that means that next year he's gonna go to a new school and then after that, he's gonna move to a middle school. So it's gonna be two big changes, like one next to the other, which is really sad. And also it's really sad that um, they didn't take into account our opinions. Like they never said the school was gonna close. There was nothing. It was just a big surprise to learn that. And also like at the beginning of the year, the principal sent an email saying that the rumors about the school closing were not true. And then now we learn that it's gonna close. So it's really sad. And I know Kindango is a really good opportunity for our community and everything, but we also need the students that are already at school to have their place, the place where they belong. So that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Silvia. Silvia, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Yes, I I want to say I don't want to close on the school because everybody here is 
used to it. And if we move to San Antonio, every, um, everybody's going to be uncomfortable and, like, not used to it. Our grades will get lower. And, like he said, we won't feel as comfortable. And, and I think we'll probably lose friends and stuff. And so I think we should just stay and shouldn't close the school. And also, if we... If we turn this to a condango, we have so many condangos. Why do we have to move this into a condango? So, um, that's all I wanted to say, just asking why. So. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Board President, at this time, uh, we, we still go back have... to uh, Senora de los Santos and give her another opportunity to see if she can. Señora Reina de los Santos, ¿nos escucha? Mr. Board President, at this time, uh, Señora de los Santos has the ability to unmute herself. But okay, I was going to call on Rosemary Muniz, and so can you uh, unmute her? Hola, buenas tardes. Sí, la escuchamos. Bueno. La escuchamos, señora de los Santos, ¿sí nos escucha? ¿Pueden oírme? Sí, la escuchamos. Um, sí. Sí, sí, la escuchamos, sí. 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 Señora, ¿no se, ¿me escucha? Sí, sí, yo estoy escuchándolas bien, pero no, no sé si ustedes me pueden oír. La podemos puede... escuchar, la escuchamos. Sí puedo oprimir el botón que está abajo, que tiene un mundo. La señal es como un mundo. Ahí puedo escoger español. Está desactivado. Está activado. Está desactivado. All right, uh, can we move on to Rosemary Muniz? Mr. Board President, uh, Rosemary Muniz, it, I'm sorry, Carlos, are we? Buenas tardes. Sí, la escuchamos. Por favor, prosigan. No. All right. That was uh, Senora de los Santos. She, she logged off. She's back on. Um, all right, uh, let's move on with Rosemary Muniz. Mr. Board President, uh, this user has an older uh, version of Zoom. It, it's not allowing me to unmute. unmute her. Rosemary, if you're interested in making your comments, you can go ahead and call in. Uh, the phone number is on the agenda. I'll provide it to you right now. Six six nine nine The meeting ID is eight one five eight two eight two. Seven two five zero. All right, uh, let's move on. Our next speaker is Nain Lopez. Nain Lopez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Nain Lopez, please unmute yourself. Sí, buenas tardes. Sí, la escuchamos. Sí, ¿me escuchan? 
estoy en el canal de español, no sé si me pueden escuchar. Sí, la escuchamos. Sí. Ok. Ok. Ok, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Nain López, uh, soy madre de tres hijos, mis hijos mayores, uno tiene 21 y una 19, los cuales cursaron primaria, kinder y toda su escuela en César Chávez, y mi tercera hija tiene ocho años y está también cursando en César Chávez. Y um, estamos muy tristes por la noticia de que se va a cerrar esa escuela, porque pensamos que es una escuela que tiene historia, no solamente es a uh, cualquier escuela, y como lo dijeron los padres anteriores, hay muchas escuelas que también pueden usar, hay otros lugares que pueden usar para Quindango, y a la vez me da gusto que haya más oportunidades para padres con niños pequeños, y como también lo dijeron, podemos compartir la escuela con, otros, um, con otras asociaciones como Quindango, pero ojalá y que la, la, la Junta Directiva tome en cuenta todos los padres que hablamos esta tarde, que no solamente sea palabras al viento y que en verdad nos tomen en cuenta. Eso espero, de verdad. Muchas gracias. Gracias por sus comentarios, señora López. Our next speaker is Victor Vázquez. Señor Vázquez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Uh, buenas noches, uh, miembros de la mesa directiva, Víctor Vázquez, somos Mayfair, y voy a hablar en español porque quiero que los padres también escuchen uh, esta pequeña historia. Saúl Ramos, uh, nuestro co-director, ha dado un resumen de nuestros puntos, pero quisiera recordar el último punto que hablaba sobre trabajar juntos y preservar este distrito y nuestras escuelas uh, y abogar por los recursos que necesitamos juntos, todos. Estábamos en una junta, yo estaba en una junta del Cover Recovery Task Force y ahí se estaba hablando sobre recursos y quién era impactado por COVID y otras, otras experiencias como el desplazamiento. Y en esa lista tenían diferentes instituciones como ISAR Union, como otras escuelas y otras organizaciones. Y lo que noté que nuestro distrito no estaba considerado como alguien que debe de ser considerado y también a lo mejor recibir el apoyo que necesita para continuar, porque hemos pasado por mucho con desplazamiento, con um, COVID, y, me hizo, y nosotros como somos, dijimos, debemos de tener un distrito como Alan Rock y sus familias considerados en estas uh, prácticas que van a determinar también el dinero de la ciudad y de COVID Recovery. Entonces, nomás quiero, quiero recordarnos que si nos unimos todos, padres, uh, partners, instituciones y también nuestros amigos de otros distritos y vamos al estado, a la ciudad y al condado para demandar o decir que necesitamos dinero porque somos un lugar impactado por el desplazamiento, por el COVID, por muchas cosas y es necesario hacer pólizas o cambios para que re redigir este dinero y recursos a lugares como Alan Rock. So, quiero recordarnos esa parte e invitarnos a todos a hacer ese, ese cambio. Gracias por los comentarios, señor Vázquez. Our next speaker is Maria Martinez. Ms. Martinez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Sí, buenas tardes. ¿Sí me escucha? Sí, la escuchamos. Ok, gracias. María Martínez, madre de estudiante de uh, Lee Matson. Bueno, ahora es Ranason. Matson, uh, abuela de, de un nieto en Curetón y tía de dos sobrinas, una en Matson y otra en San Antonio. So, yo estoy aquí apoyando a los padres de César Chávez por todo lo que están pasando y por toda esta uh, manera de decirles, ¿verdad? No, nos de, no les dan el proceso o para que ellos eh, tomen esta, esta noticia. 
es muy bonito el, el traer también el early learning para nuestros, nuestros niños, pero creo que uh, no, no se ha mencionado el estudio que se ha hecho, ¿verdad? Se ha dicho cuántos estudiantes está, va a perder para el próximo año, pero yo en sí no he escuchado ninguna otra solución más que cerrar la escuela. No he escuchado algún plan de que puedan hacer más alcance para atraer más estudiantes. Uh, no, no nos han dicho cuántos este, estudiantes para, para el nuevo Kidango van a traer que, que sea diferente a lo que estamos perdiendo. So, es como dijo ya otra compañera, ¿verdad? Es una historia que tiene César Chávez. Seamos líderes como César Chávez y tengamos ese espacio para nuestros niños y y traigamos más soluciones, no como esta, sino que traigamos más estudiantes. Hemos pagado demasiado dinero para publicidad, pero en sí no veo resultados. Al contrario, estamos perdiendo estudiantes. Ojalá que podamos traer estas soluciones alternativas en donde nos est nuestros estudiantes sigamos estando en esta escuela de César Chávez y que las escuelas pequeñas sigan escuelas pequeñas porque están recibiendo el dinero del título 1 como es la escuela lucha o como era la Gracias por sus comentarios, señora Martínez. Our next speaker is Jackie. Jackie, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, hello. My name is uh, Jacqueline Franco. I'm a mother of two daughters at Cesar Chavez, um, and I'm also a co-chair for the East San Jose Peace Leadership Team. I really urge the board to reconsider this decision right now. Um, like it's been mentioned, our families, our students have been through a lot these last couple of years. Um, we're really trying to get into that stage of recovery and healing, and we can't do that if we're constantly thinking about what's going to happen with our kids' school You know, how are we going to accommodate our schedule, our work schedule um, to fit the changes that are happening within the district? Um, not only that, but our students are feeling it. My daughters are feeling it. It took a lot for me to convince my daughters to go back in person. They're dealing with anxiety. They're dealing with fear, with COVID and everything that we've experienced in the last years. Um, and to receive that message that their school is closing next year only really uh, alliterates that, that message that they've been receiving that they don't matter and that students from our neighborhood and, and kids from our neighborhood don't matter. And I don't want them to believe in that. Um, I really think that we have an opportunity to think um, creatively and you know, maybe uh, creatively of how we want to envision our schools in the next year. I know it's been hard on the district and the funds we have, but like we said, we can create, look for more funding, um, create more programs, you know, do different um, types of outreach to bring our students back, but also to ensure that our students stay. Um, and, you know, closing down another school is not going to make sure that the students that we have continue to stay here, especially if they feel like the district is not being consistent and they don't know what's going to happen to their school in the future. So um, I really just want to be part of this process as a parent. Take more time, um, talk to parents, um, look over their options before making this decision. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Franco. Mr. Board President, at this time, we have no more requests for public comment. All right, uh, so we're concluding public comment on these items. Um, let's go ahead and take comments from uh, members of the board. Uh, Tracy Chavez. I'm sorry, did you call on me? Yeah, I'm taking comments from members okay. of the board. Okay, I'm um, asking to approve item 201 and 203, a motion. All right, we'll take them separately. Um, there's a motion for item 201. Do I have a second? Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Um, any comments from members of the board? Uh, board member, I don't know. Yeah, thank you. So. Um, I do have some comments that I'll get to, but first I just, I wanted to, um, you know, hearing 
the, the wonderful presentation that we got um, early on and the comments from the community on from various differing perspectives. I kind of wanted to give um, Dr. Bauer an opportunity if she'd like to just um, maybe explain some of the rationale of, of why this recommendation has come to us. I know we of course, have- uh, We're talking about 201 right now. And so you wanted to proceed with? Oh, and, oh, it's because we already made the motion, so we're not. Yeah, the motion on two hundred one. We'll we'll deal with the other one. I just want to make sure that so the public can follow. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the motion. Okay. So then I will. I guess that's a heads up for Dr. Bauer for um, a question that I will have on o two point o three. So for now, I don't have anything for now. So we're not voting on all of them together. Just two point oh one. Well, we're taking Just two hundred one. Two hundred one. Okay. Uh, further comments on two hundred one or questions for members of the board? I, I I actually do have I guess just a quick comment. So, in terms of the um, expanded learning opportunity program, I think that um, some of my thoughts I already kind of shared in my question to Dr. Ballesteros, uh, but based on her answer and you know a lot of the work that's been done already. I do think that um, in terms of this program, it's important that we think about some of the things that we do as, as investments, kind of upstream, upstream investments for downstream benefits. So when we develop programs like this, um, you know, similar to our dual immersion programs and a lot of the things that we've done, it takes, you know, um, I mean, it takes change and change is hard to to do even to implement a program like this. But once we show the commitment to these kinds of programs that will take resources, that will take work to get up and running, we will see the benefits down the line, whether it's to our students, whether it's that similar to that 45 year study that Dr. Ballesteros was uh, mentioning and, and overall be a benefit to to the district and to the community. And, you know, as a board member, I know I have the obligation to look out for the long-term sustainability and um, well-being of the district. And I think this program in a number of different ways, um, both in the immediate and in the long-term will be beneficial. And so I will be supporting the approval of the I don't know if we call it ELOP. It's a lot easier than saying the whole thing. So of the ELOP. So that's, those are my comments. Thank you. Other comments from members of the board or questions? Seeing none, then I'll go ahead and make my comments. I really appreciate this uh, proposal being brought forward with um, the data and uh, the studies. And so I appreciate the numbers that you brought forward. I have always heard of the anecdotes of uh, children who have access to Early learning opportunities uh, you, uh, uh, will have have better results in going to college and stuff of that sort. So appreciate you bringing actually the, the information that uh, that is uh, very much needed for the public to learn about it as well as us to make an informed decision. Uh, so and and also you know uh, in fact the matter is that when you bring forward uh, these proposals with data, it makes it much easier to just say yes. So thank you for that. Uh, board clerk, I don't know. And I apologize for, I was trying to find the button before you spoke, so I apologize not, for not going uh, before you. Thank you. And I just want to thank you, Sandra, for your uh, presentation and your work, right? All that it takes in order to even get to the point of presenting the information. Um, I also want, you know, to highlight and um, just uh, show my um, happiness for, you know, uh, the parents that have already taken the time to save a spot for their children for the summer program. You know, that like makes me so happy, right? Um, because we know that one, when our children are learning and engaged during the summer, you know, it's, um, it's good for them and for the entire community in, the, in itself. Um, and the fact that, you know, parents are um, one, hearing about these programs and opportunities to then sign up, um, you know, the different ways that you all have the ability to make sure that they um, can sign up through. So thank you for that. Um, and I'm glad, you know, that we um, are already um, 
providing you know many of these resources and services, but that we're continuing to expand and continuing to uh, think of ways to ensure that these programs stay for the long term, right? That it's not just this year or next year, but that we're looking at ways into how we can continue to implement them so that they stay here for um, a long time. So thank you uh, to you and the rest of the staff for doing that. But yeah, I'll, I will also be supporting this program. Thank you. Other comments from uh, members of the board? All right, seeing none, then I'll, I'll just close off with hey, thanks for helping us compete. I know that we have competition out there and they've been providing expanded hours of essentially childcare. Um, I know that we're gonna be providing educational opportunities during those hours. And so uh, thank you for allowing us to get our hands out of, we've been, we've been playing with our hands tied behind our backs and uh, this is gonna allow us to compete. And I know that we're gonna be able to bring back more of our children uh, who have, I don't know, no fault of their own or no, I don't fault the parents either because I actually was uh, approached by a parent who said, I don't wanna leave San Antonio, but I will because I don't get enough access to uh, enough hours. I can't leave my job and then come back and take my kid in and out of school and childcare and stuff of that sort. So uh, we're, I'm appreciative of the fact that we're responding to the needs that are out there um, as I've heard them directly from parents out in the community. So thank you for that. All right, uh, if there's no further comments and I'm gonna go ahead and call for a vote as I see you. Um, board member Bejarano. Aye. Board, board clerk Carralona. Aye. Board vice president Pam. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself put an aye, the motion passes unanimously. All right, uh, we're, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item 2.03. Uh, there any comments or questions from members of the board? I think board member Bejarano had already two? teed up a, a question for you, Dr. Bauer. Yes, the question, <laughs> just to refresh it, the question was, um, Dr. Bauer, if you could um, just take a moment to explain yours and the team's rationale for bringing this item to us tonight for our consideration. Um, I think I would appreciate hearing that as well as the community. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Trusty Bejerano. Um, This has been a process that started in January of 2021, when um, we gather the facilities repurposing committee which is by Ed Code, our 7-Eleven committee in Alum Rock. And that particular committee identified a number of sites um, to, to repurpose. The recommendations of that body that, that uh, was comprised by a multitude of uh, stakeholders in our community. Um, and they, um, share with us their thoughts. And one of the major priorities was to expand the early learning programming and repurposing facilities for early learning programming. That was the name of the committee. And so uh, Alum Rock has, was, we have been very clear from our community that we are not to sell property and that the, the engagement that we have with our partners is to offer specific services to the community. So we have kept that very clear in our minds. Um, the enrollment, the current enrollment in Cesar Chavez is shows us a 433 students with 174 students via distance learning. So in person, we have 259 students at Cesar Chavez. If we subtract the number of fifth graders moving on to the middle school, which is 75, that leaves Cesar Chavez Elementary with 184 students. And when we looked at our partnerships in terms of early learning, um, the partnerships are looking for space because with early learning, we cannot just repurpose a classroom saying, here is a classroom. It used to be third grade. Now we're going to have um, infants. 
the younger the, the students, the more the space. And you can ask Dr. Ballesteros all about that because that is the, the reason why we need to um, move uh, grades first through fifth for next year to another place. I think that the public needs to remember that this, not, this is not a school closure. Kidango is not taking over Cesar Chavez. It's going to be an, at the Cesar Chavez Early Learning Center owned and led by Alam Rock School District in partnership with Kidango. I think that that's something very important for all of us to know because that's the way we create narratives that are non-existent. And I want the board to remember that, that we are not closing Cesar Chavez. We are keeping our preschool uh, special ed students. And um, I heard a number of parents also saying that they needed to increase the number of services for special ed students in the community. Uh, we are gonna keep the, the young force and the TK and the kinder to really uh, be able to design for Alam Rock community, this early learning center. There are a number of schools around uh, Cesar Chavez. We have two schools with less than half a mile away. And I this, this I'm not bringing without the consideration of how this is gonna affect families. This is, a very difficult decision for me as your executive to present. Um, we are very clear that, um, the, that we're coming out of um, very challenging times. We have already thought, and we had, you know, uh, I have been very clear with, with Somos, and, and I, you know, uh, the transition plan we talked about together. And so, uh, including the some of the comments um, that they mentioned in terms of considering how we're going to help our children to transition. We had that conversation with Somos. So uh, our socio-emotional department, our principal, and listening to some of the feedback from the, these uh, or the community organizers, we have um, already begin to, to conceive the plan. I hope that uh, we all help our students by helping them understand that this is a great win for families, just like um, their families, that at some point they needed uh, high quality education and uh, programming for infants and toddlers which is non-existent in the area. Um, thank you for the opportunity, Trusty Bejerano, to allow me to share the data. This data has been shared uh, multiple times uh, during the demographic study presentation we have to the, for the board in November. Um, the initial repurposing facilities committee report came to the, to the board in April of 21, we have been talking about this multiple times. We have learned and asked parents to be a survey and through the LCAP forums opportunities. Um, I know that sometimes we're busy and we are not able to go to a meeting or we're not able to, to read our parents' square, but these have been multiple ways. Uh, can we do better? Can I, and I'm just going to own this. Can I do something better in terms of communication? Probably yes, in terms of um, re more reminders, but we have tried to outreach in multiple languages as well. Um, the day of the parent meeting at Chavez, we had a, a translation services, both in Spanish and Vietnamese. Um, and so uh, we tried um, as much as we can to be able to communicate. We are a very a unique district that engages parents in a very robust way. Uh, probably the best parent engagement programming in the county. So thank you so much for the opportunity. 
um, this was not an easy decision. It was not done in a rush. It has been done very thoughtfully. I know that sometimes uh, people are not gonna agree, but I respectfully ask the board to consider and approve this recommendation that I'm bringing for the board so that um, we can increase the services that Alum Rock provides to the Mayfair community. Thank you. Vice President Palm. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, I'm just gonna bear with me, uh, make my uh, comments on both items because in both 2.01 and 2.03, given that, you know, this, this, this is the crucial vote. Uh, let me say first that I completely understand uh, the sentiments of the community members who uh, spoke their opinions about uh, Cesar Chavez Elementary. Uh, you know, in, in 1990, that was where I got to see uh, my first fifth grade promotion. My cousin had recent, had uh, finished the fifth grade and was about to move on to Shepherd Middle School or she would go on to do a, a lot more things and, and end up becoming a doctor. So, you know, great, uh, great things do start in Alum Rock. Uh, I understand the pain that, that comes with such a move. Uh, the last two years have not been easy. We've had a lot of emotional trauma, not just among the children, but uh, among teachers, staff. Uh, it has not been an easy time uh, to be around the, you know, in these last two years. Uh, but, at the same, but at the same time, uh, let's take a step back and think of this, you know, and I want to stress, Cesar Chavez is not closing. There is no school closure. Uh, there continues to be two elementary schools within the Mayfair area. And I, I wanted to, to emphasize clearly that no San Antonio elementary is not going anywhere. There's no plan to close San Antonio Elementary. I wanted to, to reassure the community, you know, back to uh, my statement to uh, San Jose Spotlight uh, in the spring of 2021 about, uh, you know, when we had uh, this discussion about the 7-Eleven committee, there will always, you know, my pledge has been, there will always be a school in every part of the district. Yeah. Uh, change is hard, but this is an opportunity to blaze a trail that uh, we have not yet taken. Uh, in response to the challenge, uh, you know, let's not beat around the bush. In school enrollment everywhere is declining, but this is an opportunity for our district to reach out to to fulfill, fulfill a need for early childhood education in this community for Alum Rock to take its experience in elementary education and to apply it to the crucial pre-kindergarten years, the preschool, the wraparound parental services. And we are doing it in, yes, in partnership with Kidango, but led and run, you know, run in an Alum Rock school an asset that will continue to stay in this district, an asset that will continue to be available to this community, and an asset that hopefully, uh, you know, can be something that continues to serve uh, all of us in Allen Rock, not just parents and students, but, you know, others within the wider Allen Rock community, wider Eastside San Jose community, uh, a place for uh, a quality pre-kindergarten early childhood education experience. So yes, I get it that, you know, changing schools is not something pleasant, especially as we meander our way out of COVID, but this is a 
op this is a huge opportunity for our district, our community to try to stem not just declining enrollment, but also uh, to as a way for our district to serve an even greater population in Alum Rock. And so, uh, you know, as much as I have my own fond memories of uh, uh, Cesar Chavez, which uh, I was in third grade when the decision was made to name, rename Mayfair to Cesar Chavez, this is an opportunity for us to make sure that we still have a Cesar Chavez early learning center to educate our kids. And so, uh, you know, with, with that said, I, I, yes, I will be voting yes to approve this, but I also ask our members of the community, our parents to give us a chance, give us a, give this a chance. Let us, you know, to let us break new ground and let us continue to keep Cesar Chavez Early Learning Center uh, in existence. And yes, uh, relevant to a new generation of uh, Allen Rock residents. Thank you very much. Board Member Chavez, I see your hands up. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve 203. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and call on you for the motion. Uh, but let me continue to call on comments and then I'll call, I'll call you back for the motion. Uh, Board Member Badano. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, President Quintero. So um, first I want to just say, I wanna thank um, everyone obviously who provided public comment tonight and, and feedback throughout the past year or so on this process and, and this whole situation that our district is in. Particularly tonight, I want to thank our, I'm assuming, um, younger participants who bravely stepped forward and gave their opinion and their thoughts about their school and their community. And that that's huge. I, that's very impactful for me as a board member. And even it takes me back to when I was a student here in Alam Rock a long, long time ago, about it's like 40 years ago now, I shudder to say that, but it's been about 40 years when I was a student at Thomas P. Ryan, and I had to make the change to, um, I went to McCollum, and at that time, I did not want to go, and I cried. I remember I cried because I didn't want to change schools and leave my friends, and I, so I know it's hard, and, and, you know, for my parents, it was hard, and transportation from Ryan to McCollum, you know, was a thing, and so I get it. Um, but I will also say that I carry with me today friendships and relationships and learning that I got at McCollum. And, and I still have friends to this day from my third grade class, Miss Laraway's class at third grade at McCollum, um, you know, that I have today. And, and our kids are in college and, and we talk about that, but we're, we're friends from, from McCollum. So I understand that. Um, feeling. I've lived it. Um, I appreciate that. But I also would offer that when there is change, there's also opportunity for potentially lifelong benefit um, with that. And, and I know it takes a struggle to manage through that change sometimes, but um, good things can be possible from that, at least from my experience. Um, I also want to acknowledge, I kind of already did, but I want to acknowledge Everyone from our our 7-Eleven committee um, and the representation that we had of parents and our labor units and and teachers and everyone that was represented and the opportunity for parents to engage at that time that really informed us the report that we got informed us about what the sentiment was from all of our stakeholders about the situation that the district is in. I appreciate um, you know Ms. Garcia and everyone, all the teams that have done our panorama surveys and work with our LCAP uh, meetings and processes to get feedback there over the course of the past year. Plus, as we've heard consistently, the desire for the, this type of programming, mean, we've, we've heard that through feedback. I've lived it as a parent. I know some of my colleagues on the board are currently witnessing that as parents. We, we see and we hear, you know, what the, the desires of the community are. 
Um, and so that informs my decision as well. And then also just in to that point of informing my decision, I think it's important for a school board or, you know, for the most part, any democratic body to provide multiple opportunities for feedback, for comment, for engagement. And through the ways that I just described, Dr. Bauer described, I think there, that we have done that as a district. We've done um, a great deal of to the extent possible, considering that the, the team, the staff still has to deal with everything we've dealt with over the past year or two from COVID to, you know, some of the social um, challenges society-wide that we've, that we've gone through. It's, it's a lot of work to try to handle the day-to-day, -day, the very special circumstances that have come up in the past months and years. Um, and in addition, to try to go above and beyond to engage every single person in the community. In a perfect world, we would do that. Um, but at the end of the day, there's only so much bandwidth that, that's available to get everything done that needs to get done. So those opportunities that have arisen over the past years, I'm very thankful to, for those. And at the end of the day, you know, the democratic process calls for decision making to me, be made by whatever individuals are sitting in these seats democratically elected by, by the voters of this district. And so, you know, I think that it's a very, I appreciate also the comments that this is a very difficult decision for us, for everything that we've talked about tonight. And it's not, I mean, I don't think this is going to be the last difficult decision for this board or whatever board may come. And so, but at the end of the day, the board, um, is the one, is the body that needs to make the decision. We should be considering all the feedback. We should be considering every side of, a, of, a, um, of an argument and every bit of data and every bit of inter interaction that we have and make our decision. And so that being said, um, based on all of that, I will be supporting this. I think it is a very good idea. I think even from those who have their concerns about um, this this opportunity, even those uh, many of them stated their appreciation and their understanding of the need for this type of programming. So um, I will be supporting this tonight and I thank everyone involved who has gotten us to this point um, where I think we can be a model for other districts and, and other um, places to move in this direction to serve students and families. So thank you. Remember it on what Thank you. Um, and thank you, Ernest, for uh, mentioning a lot of things that I was going to say, so I'll keep mine shorter. Um, but thank you also, Dr. Bauer, for restating um, the process that we, we've we gone through, right, over a year now. Uh, well, I mean, 2017, right? 2015, uh, moving towards uh, making sure that we provide the resources and services. Thank you, Dr. Ballesteros, for your work and leading those efforts as well in, in our community, in our district. Um, and, you know, just like Bejerano uh, mentioned earlier, um, I also wanted to bring up, you know, another big fact that I know, right, because I am in law enforcement, I am a probation officer, and I do work with youth who have been incarcerated. And we do know, and Dr. Ballesteros, you might be able to quote whoever, you know, does the studies that, you know, we look at the, uh, at the models, and not me necessarily, right, but those that are involved in creating more prisons, right? versus colleges. I mean, that's really the, the black and white, the opposite, right? Um, and, and we look at the third grade outcomes, right, of the tests in third grades to determine if we're gonna be you know, making more prison spaces, more beds in prisons, or creating more colleges. And so for me, um, and I've been you know, loud and proud about the work um, and my, my passion in closing down juvenile hall one of these days because there's no more crimes being committed by by youth, and that's because we're providing resources and services like this, right? An early learning center where our children can get the resources, the services, the early learning that they need to feel confident, to be in class, to raise their hand, to answer the questions, to get 90%, 100% on their, you know, colors, on their numbers, on their, as they grow, right? And, and, and how they um, learn. And so um, for me, this is a dream come true. Um, and, and I think everybody, you know, I heard everybody speaking. I wrote down your name. Thank you so much for coming and giving us your input. I heard everybody's, uh, you know, um, excitement about this. 
So I think everybody came and said, came and said, I support this. I support this. And some said, however, right. However, we get to, um, you know, think of the families being impacted, the children, um, the elders, right, that might walk their children to school, and all the realities that every child that will be affected, whatever way that is, um, you know, will be affected. And um, thank you, Dr. Bauer, for, you know, doing your best to meet with families and letting them know before today, right, because we could have just put it on the agenda, and then, you know, it would have been, um, I think, more of that shock of, like, why didn't you involve me? So I appreciate you at least trying to, you know, get a meeting with uh, parents beforehand so that they heard from you first, also with staff. Um, and I know, Dr. Bauer, I know I asked you some of these questions beforehand um, and, you know, I'll state your answer and then you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, you know, some of my, obviously, uh, things were that, right? Did you meet with parents? Um, how far ahead? And um, also one of the big things were, were any staff going to lose their job if you know we go into this transition? And so your answer was no. Um, and so many other things I asked, but I think those two, you know, um, were important to me um, as we move in this direction because uh, we know that you know if any in income is lost, right, in any one of our homes, you know, it really, um, really does have a big impact. So I, I'm glad that no, not, no staff are going to lose their jobs um, if we go in this direction. And, you know, I also want to um, state that um, everybody that's, you know, stated, like, we need to come together, we need to work together. Absolutely. I think nobody here would uh, say, uh, disagree with that comment. You know, I look forward to continuing to hear from you. Um, I unfortunately didn't hear from many in the community before this, but I did get a lot of emails, um, interestingly enough, in support of this. Um, I got one that uh, actually um, came to talk today. Um, that was in agreement with this, but you know, wanted to make sure that we had all those other things in, in taken in consideration. But other than that, um, I got a lot of emails in support, in support um, of this, and I'm looking forward to you know um, having that door you know open um, and the center open. And so um, I just I say all that to ensure that um, our community knows that we're here. We're here to serve. You elected us, as Lejarano mentioned, right? You elected us to vote on matters like this that are hard, um, to take our all considerations when we are um, going to be voting, um, including you know our, our 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 district and making sure that it's here again for the long term, um, another ninety years plus. Um, and you know, I know Dr. Bauer also thought ahead and made sure that she put a staff person to oversee this process. Right. So thank you, Rene, for being that person now, you know, and I, I'm saying that out loud. So any one of you, right, that came today um, and have some thoughts to find solutions, to move forward in a good way, Rene Sanchez is there, you know, he'll take your call, make sure you, you let us know, um, you know, I'll say his number, 928-6800. Um, we want to hear, right? We want you involved. We want you in the 7-Eleven committees. We want you to come to not just the board meeting where we're voting, right? Great, thank you so much for showing up, but we wanna hear from you and we want you to be involved, a part of the solution on behalf of our children um, and our families here in Alam Rock. So I look forward, um, it's an exciting time. I see it as an opportunity. I see so many people that showed up today that I haven't you know, seen in a while. So good to see you. And um, you know, I heard some of you for the first time here and I look forward to working in partnership and collaboration and tough decisions that are continuing to come our ways, you know, and how to do it in the best way possible for our community. Um, but I will also be supporting this. Thank you. Board member Bajano, is that your hand from previous or? No, I, I have one more quick comment that I also wanted to make um, that I forgot to make, but, you know, as, as we potentially move forward in this direction and other things that may come our way, one thing to remember also is that these partnerships that we're talking about, partnerships with Kadango, the work that we've done with a lot of different um, partners out there, you know, it, it, things to do things like this and other things that may come down the road for the district, it takes kind of like timing and things to line up and and I think it's important to also think about the fact that when the opportunity exists and, and all the many or several partners are aligned in, in their 
efforts and their focus and their capacity to do work, then that's a time to, to kind of strike, what's that saying, while the something is hot or whatever. Um, but, you know, iron is hot. There you go. <laughs> but, you know, as if we, um, there, there are times, I think, when delaying or, or debating, you know, things too long, sometimes opportunities may come and go. So I think when things are in front of us, although we do want to be thoughtful and, and consider, give sufficient time, we also have to think about those alignments and the timing um, of, of the opportunities that we have. So I just wanted to mention that because I think we have this opportunity with partners to move forward in this, in this particular item, but there may be other opportunities in the future where again, partners are looking for certain things, we're looking for certain things, and if we can get those things to line up, that's the time to, to try to take action. Um, so that's just another thing that I consider as, as well. Thank you. Further comments from the board? All right, so there's no further comments, I'm gonna close off with mine. Uh, and then I'll go to you, Trustee Chavez, for the motion that you were seeking to make. Um, a todos aquellos que están aquí, gracias por acudir a esta junta esta noche. Uh, and don't worry, Carlos, I'll go ahead and translate for myself. Les uh, agradecemos por estar aquí, por dar su perspectiva. En lo personal, este, este tema es muy personal para mí, siendo que mis hermanos, mis hermanas cursaron su escuela elemental ahí en, lo que la, en, en el lugar en que na, en el plantel que en aquel entonces era Mayfair Elementary. Así que no lo tomamos a, bueno, lo, yo, yo personalmente no tomo esta decisión o este tema uh, como algo así eh, bastante, es, es algo serio. I want to say that uh, this uh, this issue is a very very personal. Uh, my, my my siblings went to school there with, in what was then Mayfair Elementary. A few years prior, I was there um, watching my brother go through a little ceremony, his fifth grade ceremony, uh, getting a teddy bear from his uh, very loving teacher that had, you know, uh, wanted to have him part. It was a really cool teddy bear that her and her husband actually had a little business they had made, and she gave it to him as a gift. And so it's a very, very personal thing for me. And we don't take this lightly. At least I don't. I know I, I don't speak for my colleagues, but I'm sure that they don't either. Um, nobody signs up saying, I want, I, you know, I want to serve my community and I want to go ahead and you know, make these types of decisions. These are very, very difficult decisions. That, um, if a school district is serious about its work, if a school district uh, seeks to do the right thing by maintaining its fiscal solvency, then sometimes it has to make these decisions. We can look to San Francisco Unified, the crisis that they're facing right now, um, Sacramento City Unified School District. They already went through a series of shutdowns and are now going through a massive strike and a series of problems that are all financial because they kind of put off these very tough decisions. We can look down south to Inglewood that is going through uh, receivership, just outright been taken over by the state because of significant financial problems. And I'm proud of the fact that we have moved away from that. We have a positive budget because we've taken these decisions that aren't easy to make, but they're not very popular, but nevertheless, they have to be made. And uh, we have to, we, we, we move in the positive direction. Let's take a look at some of the options around local. Oak Grove School District just went ahead and sold off some of their land. And those are the options out there. And I'm not interested in any of those options. I've uh, spoke very clearly to Dr. Bauer when, these, when, 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 the inev when we were looking at the inevitable. We fought this. We fought this as much as we could. And Dr. Bauer can attest to it that we held on and pushed back and the the number of students just isn't there. And uh, we, we have to do the best we can with what we got. And this is an exact proposal that I put forward to Dr. Bauer and I said, I'm not in the business of shutting down our school. We need to leave enough so that it is an Allen Rock school so that when in the future, because I know in the future we're gonna need them, 
We can go back in and make use of our sites. And this is exactly what we asked, at least I personally put forward to Dr. Bauer. I'm sure my colleagues probably brought up something similar. Um, but a long time ago, when we were looking at these issues, this was uh, a, a scenario that I put forward that I was not going to be supportive of letting go of any of our sites outright, but that we needed to maintain a presence. And we've met that. Well, we still have a presence at this site. We bring in partners that allow us to keep it going financially. They bring in the financial resources and the programming that aligns with what we have, our mission, our goal here at Alam Rock. And so we have a provider that uh, is gonna bring in children to the district that I am certain will continue in Alam Rock rather than go on out to an, one of our competitors. And that was our goal. This is a proposal we have. Um, those initial conversations with Dr. Bauer, there were no partners or nothing. It was just an abstract concept of, I'm not interested in selling off land. I'm not interested in becoming a, uh, a landlord for a um, bunch of charters. And because that's exactly what we would have if we opened it up and said, well, here it is. We no longer have use for this site because we don't have the uh, number of children required to operate it. Um, and they'd come on over and say, give me, give me, give me. Um, we've taken on the extraordinary step of pushing back against the County Board of Education. I was there when our superintendent very bravely took this on and said, some of our competitors right here, right next door to our sites, your own staff has demonstrated that they're not preparing our children. Their children are not doing well. And yet the County Board of Education went ahead and approved their renewal. And so these are the things that we are struggling against. And as I mentioned before in my previous comments, we've been working with our hands tied behind our back. We now are gonna be expanding the number of hours that children have access to learning opportunities out inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, we're gonna be expanding the opportunities for children to come in at an earlier age so they can stay in Allen Rock. We can continue to grow the number of children rather than see them leave to a competitor. And so I'm appreciative of this proposal has been brought forward because I think it meets uh, those ideas that I put forward a long time ago. I, I, it, it is not, I, I do not want to make light of the pain that is being felt uh, anytime that we ask for change and, or we move something that is so near and dear to everyone, such as a, your local elementary school, it, it's painful but uh, it is a medicine that we have to take in order for us to survive and not to fall into the trap of uh, many other districts that are, they're going through right now, Oakland, San Francisco, Sacramento, Inglewood, as I mentioned, or our neighbors here to, to the South, you know, Grove that are selling off some of their land. Um, and that's not something I signed up for and I will not support to sell off uh, our assets, our children's assets, our community assets. Uh, I want to make sure that we're clear, Dr. Bauer, I know it's been mentioned, but some of the concerns that were raised about the supposed closure of San Antonio, I know it's a brand new school, we just are still paying for it. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that the public hears directly from you in terms of the future of San Antonio and the basis for that, that assertion or that uh, statement. We're not closing San Antonio. We're not closing San Antonio because it's the newest building in the district. So. Um, yeah, all right. It's a brand new school, brand new facility. Um, with regard to our partners, I want to thank our partners who've been out there and have helped us. We have, uh, for example, Somos Baker, who's been an active partner right there at the Cesar Chavez Elementary. Uh, for years already at uh, the Family Resource Center. And uh, we know that they've done some great work in outreaching and building up the community. And uh, those partnerships extend beyond just the work at, F at the FRC. I know that Somos Mayfield was an in, 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 a, actually a very important partner in the Facilities Committee, correct? Uh, Dr. Bauer, Rene, you, you both can attest to that. Uh, Rene, what role did uh, Somos Mayfield play in the, in the facility? Facilities committee that provided the recommendation? They, they were definitely active and involved in the conversations uh, when we met on a regular basis, um, just like many other 
community members. And that was definitely one of the recommendations that came through in uh, the plan itself and the recommendations to the board. And as part of the process of that committee, uh, the information was provided in terms of the demographics, the projections that were provided, correct? To that committee? That is correct. So uh, the committee was well informed, mm -hmm. provided with information that was provided by uh, professionals. Not just This wasn't uh, district staff giving those numbers. This was a demographic study, correct? That was the demographic study and the data that showed um, you know, all those numbers throughout our districts. And one of the big recommendations was for um, early learning services for our families. All right, well, with that said, I think we've uh, talked about this issue long enough. Um, and if the board's ready to make a decision, I wanna remind everybody that we've taken public comment extensively uh, previously. Uh, and we were here for quite a while already uh, taking public comment on this item. So I just wanna make sure that the public's well aware of that. Um, with that said, uh, Tracy Chavez, you had your hand raised and you were interested in making a motion. Uh, I was just scratching my eyebrow. <laughs> okay, so is there a motion then? There was a motion. I made the motion. You never made the motion because I didn't, I didn't hear it. Uh, okay, please, can please I, motion? the motion to approve 203. All right, we have a motion to approve okay. item 203, uh, which is approval of Senator Chavez at Early Learning Center. Do I have a second? Second, yes. Uh, the second is by board member Ranuera. All right, at this point, uh, if there's no further comments from members of the board, seeing none, then I'll go ahead and uh, call for the vote as I see you. Board member Bajarano. Aye. Board clerk Herrera Lora. Aye. Board vice president Fong. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. With myself, one and I, the motion passes unanimously. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to item 2.04, which is a climate report from San Jose PD on crime uh, in and around uh, ARUSD and what their patrol capabilities are in ARUSD. Um, Dr. Bauer or uh, Barbara Verano, did you introduce this item? Uh, yes, I did request um, this item to be brought to us. Uh, in light of a number of different things, I think at least anecdotally, and maybe we'll hear tonight actually backed up with some numbers, um, we're all, I think as a community, keeping our eye on and, and very concerned in some instances with the level of crime in the community at large, but also the impact that that has on our students, on our families, on our facilities. Um, and so, you know, given the entire climate within our district, as well as the community, I just kind of wanted to um, get like a climate update from our police department about what um, they're seeing in our community. I know myself and others on the board have had personal experiences of, of criminal type behaviors here at in our homes and, and nearby our schools. And so um, it's an issue that I, that I think uh, when I ran for this position a long time ago that I wanted to prioritize is, is the safety of our students, our families, and our staff. And so that's why I want to hear um, about what's going on and maybe hopefully be able to ask some questions and get some kinds of recommendations about how we as a board can make decisions that will help protect our community and, and maybe even some policy modifications that we need or whatever would be necessary for the safety of our of our schools. So that's why I brought this item in, and I'm looking forward to getting some information tonight. All right, uh, Captain Trayer, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, I wanted to, before you start, just uh, let the community know that we have, uh, very lucky to have such an excellent uh, individual that's uh, uh, looking out for our public safety out here. The last time we met, um, he, is, he was uh, instrumental in putting. Uh, he was actually leading a, a resource fair out in uh, one of the one of the areas with highest need in our community. Unfortunately, um, it was uh, you know there were some some issues around there, but him and his team jumped right into it and kept the community safe in conjunction with the firefighters who stepped in. Uh, so thank you for that type of work that you're doing to build up the community uh, and uh, and helping uh, helping uh, you know get 
keeping us safe. So thank you very much. The floor is yours. Well, thank you very much for that welcome. And it's great to see you again under um, cooler conditions instead of a fire, right? And thank you for coming out for that event. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, please let me know if it looks odd. And I will, I know that what I'm saying is being translated. So I wanna make sure I don't speak too fast for translators. Um, here we go. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bejarano, thank you for, thank you for uh, letting me know kind of the purpose behind it. I was just, um, I got a very brief email asking to show up and, and um, I wanted to kind of give you my version of a climate report. It might not cover everything you said today, but this is not one day in and out for me. I'm your captain and I am the community's captain. So please know if I don't answer something perfectly, I know how to find the answer, okay? And um, first of all, thank you for having me. Second of all, um, I, a, a few of you know that I have a huge soft spot for everything you're doing for kids in our community. Um, they, are, they feel like family to me. I, I know a lot of them and um, just had a tremendous experience growing up in San Jose and seeing what board members like you do, the big picture of things. So thank you for that. Um, I am part of the Mayor's Gang Prevention Task Force, so I'm aware of what is happening with both youth and adults uh, related to gang activity in our, in our city, especially the Foothill Division. And I'll talk a little more about that so you understand kind of my area. All right, my, uh, my slideshow seems to be working, I think. Uh, real quick, that's uh, the stuff I want to talk about quickly today. I know you have been here a long time already, so I'll try and buzz through it. Uh, I've been a police officer here for 27 years. Um, I've worked all of the bureaus, which is like a detective bureau, uh, vice stuff, um, internal affairs, and my heart and soul is patrol. And as your captain, I am a patrol captain right now. So it is a gift to be your captain and the community's captain. Um, and just introducing myself to you, if I haven't met you before, but also the community that's watching, um, I'm going to give you ways that you can reach out to me and I can help you facilitate some of the issues that you're seeing in the neighborhood. Uh, very simply, um, we used to give out like, you know, I want to lower something by 10% or change this or that. And those are really fluffy numbers in the end. What it comes down to is, um, like you said, I want you to feel safer at home. I want to feel safer at home. I was just on your side of town uh, waiting for my chance to talk. Um, I was at my son's baseball game at Piedmont Hills High School. And that's my area. And um, I want people to feel safe when they go to these events for our kids and watch them grow and successfully become part of our community later in life. And we do that together. I can't solve unhoused um, homelessness in our area. I can't solve the graffiti problems by myself, but I have seen what we've been able to do together. I did bring a sergeant with me, um, Tom Muller, Thomas Muller. He's a sergeant from the school liaison unit. In a second, Tom, if you're on, I'll let you uh, jump in and after the next slide. Um, but if he if he's been waiting a long time, so if he had to if he had to go, I understand. Um, the biggest issues I'm seeing today, and this is um, I meet with about 32 community groups a month, and I personally meet with almost all of them when I can. Um, it's been easy easier with Zoom, right? But things are changing a lot more in person, which is great. Uh, the biggest issue I'm getting from communities all over my division is traffic or traffic around schools, but not just around schools. Traffic in our neighborhoods. Um, you know that the fatality rate in San Jose, we've had a lot of traffic fatalities. And that to me is equivalent to homicide, those ripple effects it has on community members that I know, family members that I've known and grown up with um, have been the victims of traffic, um, traffic, fatal traffic accidents. So uh, just know that we are working on that. And there's a whole nother slide that I talk about what we're doing. Uh, the unhoused issue, um, especially the Ellen Rock corridor, uh, Story Road further south, and then um, a little bit up along the freeway area. So that has been a big issue that we've been working with through the proper housing authorities in San Jose. And Tom, if you're on, I don't know if you have the ability to jump in, but this was a chance for you just to kind of give a, uh, a second of uh, answers maybe related to school incidents. Tom Muller is our sergeant. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, uh, Tom Tom kicked me out to teach me a lesson, I think. But the, um, uh, I, I was hoping Tom could just give a little brief update. We talk, we speak to each other every, 
almost every day about what's happening in our schools. And I thought a quick climate on what's happening in the schools, Tom, if you have a second. Might not be happening. Um, all right, well, that's okay. Tom's a good person. I know uh, it's just a matter of te a technical thing. I don't know if I should click on this button here, guys. It says join as a panelist. I would be happy to do that. I'll try it. Yes, go ahead. You're back. All right, I'm back. And Tom, are you there or no? Tom is not here. Okay, we'll just keep going then, guys, if that's okay. Um, Tom Fu is here. Well, hi, Tom. Tom Muller uh, isn't here, but he would tell you that the things we're seeing in San Jose at the schools um, at every level, especially the middle and high schools, are uh, fights and sometimes gang related fights, um, weapons, and obscene posts and threatening posts. Uh, those seem to be regular events throughout this city, not just in Foothill Division. And then um, I wanted to bring up the privately manufactured firearms. Fortunately, we knock on wood, we don't see those a lot at school, but we do see them on the streets more than I've ever seen as a police officer. So those are what we call ghost guns and ghost guns, um, the PMFs are what we're all trying to call them instead of ghost guns. Uh, that way we all call it the same thing. Those are- um, those Excuse are... me, Captain, you, you are currently not sharing your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try again with that. It looks good, thank you. Okay. So you can see the uh, PM, the PMF I was talking about, the privately manufactured firearms. I, you know, when I was a new police officer, I would um, often have vehicle stops and a lot of people would have drugs or weapons here and there, but the amount of guns that we're getting off the street from youth are real. So I just wanna bring that up so you don't think I'm uh, ignoring a, a very big issue that we're dealing with in San Jose. Um, traffic problems, we are dealing with our traffic team. We have a traffic enforcement unit. Um, I have put them in different locations as I hear complaints of, and I bring that up because I don't know every school. Um, my wife is a teacher. She teaches kindergarten, first grade combo class. She has for like 20 years, I think. Um, don't tell her I don't know the exact years. I'll get in trouble. But um, that being said, I know that their school, like they have teachers out, um, and when when somebody's driving wrong, a parent, that gets brought up through the administration. It gets handled a lot of times through that way. But schools are different, right? Everybody handles it in a different way. Um, and if I need to be involved, I usually um, will send the traffic team out and they'll help. They do write a lot of tickets, though. You know, they write hundreds of tickets at a time. The unhoused has been an issue for a couple different schools. Uh, it's It can be, uh, for lack of a better term, like whack-a-mole. We are moving... Uh, families, if you will, of people who are unhoused, they, they stayed together very often. And no matter what resources are, are uh, offered, there are some people that just don't accept that. And then the uh, school the school liaison team is, in my opinion, second to none. Um, and they are, they are very interactive. And Officer Cervantes and Corey Green are my uh, liaison units for the Foothill Division. And if you haven't met them, um, they are usually very involved and keep me updated along with uh, Sergeant Mueller. And then the uh, as far as the, the firearms, we, you know, I keep seeing arrests and I bring it up because they're around um, Adelante in the middle of the night, right? They're, they're um, Cinderella, they're Poco, they're um, all over. But I use that as an example because that happened recently. It, it, it's in the middle of the night and I, I get that. And that's good that it's not happening when our kids are there. But the, um, the reality is, is they are in our neighborhood. Uh, this is what um, you can do to help. I sent this information to Maribel with the links to make it easier so you don't have to write anything down, hopefully, and the community can have it as well. But that's for traffic. That's who you can do a complaint with um, and tell them the timelines, because that's better than me just saying there's a problem at Adelante Dos, right? At Adelante. Um, you, you, and it, I think sometimes it's more powerful when it comes from community members, because I don't always see it. The homeless concerns is there. And then the school incidents, I just ask that people keep calling when, when they have something happen to their child. Sometimes we might not know as administrators or as police officers until a mom or a dad or a family member calls and helps us. And then the ghost gun thing, I put that back in there because we do have a new program that Chief Mata started recently where you can turn in ghost guns and get paid for it. And that's, um, 
I've never heard of that happening. So I'm excited for that, for even one gun to get taken off the street that way. I think it's going to become a little contagious and we'll get some guns off the street. Um, almost done, promise. I tried to keep it under 10. Um, gang related and uh, school violence are my hot topics. That's something uh, I immediately get notified of. And um, not just the school, but also, often the administrators will call me. There, a lot of them are part of the mayor's gang task force. Um, I heard it earlier um, in, in a different presentation that you were doing. Somebody spoke about mental health. It's a huge issue, right? Um, with adult and youth, maybe because of COVID, maybe not. Um, but for sure, I see it in, in all over the city, uh, youth dealing with things like the time off from COVID and that type of thing. Can't skip fentanyl. Um, it's one of the scariest things I've ever seen as a police officer, scariest drug. Um, you know, we can't, you can't even touch a grain of fentanyl uh, with gloves off without putting yourself at risk of getting sick or maybe overdosing. It's that, it's that um, potent and really a scary drug where someone might be able to buy a, a marijuana in, in, back in the day from someone not thinking much about it, where today that could be a life or death decision, right? So fentanyl is a, a big issue. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you are familiar with that. Um, I, I don't want to skip over this stuff, but I don't want to. I don't want to waste your time. But the uh, school burglaries are also a big deal, day or night. I get called twenty four seven if there's ever an incident in a school, and we send it through our chain of command. The chiefs know about it as well. It's a really big deal. They recently did arrest a couple kids, excuse me, juveniles um, under under twenty one who were um, vandalizing and um, stealing from schools. But it is a nonviolent felony, so um, the ramifications for that or treatment and not uh, not always, uh, they're not gonna be stuck in jail for a long time, like perhaps 25 years ago. That's a picture of the Foothill Division on the left. I did it uh, this afternoon, so I added this one. I'm sorry, it's a little grainy, but that shows you how big it is. It goes from Milpitas all the way down to the bottom of Evergreen. And then the um, next, the next slide over on the right, um, your pictures are in front of it for me, but I think you can see it. That is the amount of traffic collisions in 30 days in the Alum Rock area, your area where your schools are mostly. That's just 30 days. That's not fatal accidents. Those are just traffic collisions in our in our city. And I, I can't I can't believe that. I mean, that many bubbles are popped up right there. So it's not um, a small thing. And that's what the whole city looks like. It's not what just our area looks like, but um but wow, right? I think that's a that's a lot of bubbles there. Okay, one uh, final plug is um, I am doing a coffee with a cop. It's the first one we've done since COVID hit um, at Starbucks. The uh, manager of Starbucks, the district manager, offered up their location. If you have time, I know it's a Saturday. Hopefully, you're doing something fun. But if you have time to stop by at ten, you or the community, please come and meet your officers who are working in your area, uh, men and women that. Uh, give everything to keep our neighborhood safe. Um, and that's a, and I sent that flyer to Maribel as well. And uh, that's it. I wanted to put my contact information at the bottom. That's my email address. And that's my cell phone number. Please don't call me with 911 stuff. But if you do call 911, anybody, community, um, anybody from the board, you do call something big and it's related to the school, let's say, please don't hesitate to email me and say, hey, Todd, I called 911 today because I saw somebody break into Cesar Chavez school. I, I, I know I will know about it, but I, I like to know that you called, right? So it just kind of gives me a little bit of a litmus test to know what's happening from your end, what you're seeing from living out there. Okay, I'm sorry. I hope that I hope it didn't take too long. Um, and the rest of my time, I'll be a great listener. All right. Thank you for that excellent presentation. Uh, board member, I don't know you had come. Yeah, first of all, thank you, Captain Trayer, for um, coming and presenting to us tonight and, and being patient. You know, we had an important item, obviously, up front. Um, so thank you. And thank you to um, the individual who you brought, even though he wasn't able to make it, that the fact that, you know, he made the effort. We're appreciative of that. Two, two questions that I have um, that you kind of alluded to in your presentation. Um, one of them is with regards to um, a concern that I've always had. Um, I mean, I understand that fights and potential gang fights and weapons on campuses between students is, is always an issue. But, but my concern um, in some respects, even more than that, is 
um, the the risk, if there are any, of individuals coming from off campus posing a threat to students or staff. So although, you know, I'm concerned about on campus, really I have concerns about whether it is unhoused individuals or, you know, parents who may have some, um, you know, issues between maybe a, a mom and a dad or whatever it may be. Um, we've had people come from off campus and we've had some of our staff injured, if I'm not mistaken. And so we have had some of that. And so question number one is, um, you know, any suggestions you might have for our, us as board members or even our staff in the schools in terms of what to look out for, how to um, try to prevent any of that, those possibilities. And then the second question is, um, I'm, I'm glad you focus so much on the traffic stuff. I talked to Dr. Bauer this week um, about uh, later on tonight, I'll probably be requesting to put this item on the agenda. Um, but I, I see that the city has or had a program called Street Smarts, um, which is an education uh, program for to have within the schools. I know when I was in school, you know, we had safety patrol and I remember having like setting up cones and teaching us how to cross the street and those things. And I know our students and our families don't have control over those crazy cars driving, but I think um, one thing that we may be able to assist with in the effort is properly educating our families, you know, just how to be smart. I mean, as the name suggests, how to be smart in the street. Cause I see a lot of people crossing, looking at their phones, not paying attention. And it seems like they're not quite either understanding or taking seriously the con the potential consequences of not being aware. So if you can tell me if, if you know if that program still exists, um, I guess that's the question because I was gonna request something along those lines tonight to our staff. I wanna make sure you can still hear me, okay? Yeah. You can. Okay, great. Um, cause my button isn't working, which is, uh, weird. So, uh, first of all, when it comes to threats or volatile behavior coming to the school, my advice, and I hate uh, to go back to my wife, but she is my number one, right? My advice is to never take it on. If you call 911 and say, we have, we have something happening here. That's volatile. It's dangerous. It's threatening to two people or to each other. The officers are going to come out. It's at a school. It, they're going to come out as quick as they can. Um, please don't take it on. And um, usually that anger isn't guided toward administrators, but it can be right. Let's say a student has been um, brought into the office and then parents get really uh, a parent or a guardian can get really upset with what's happening, how to handle that. Um, just know you can get a hold of me. OK, if, if you're if you're an administrator at your school and you have somebody that's been very volatile in the past and you think it's going to be an issue in the future, like you know you're gonna call somebody in, we do what's called a civil standby. And if it's not me, it's one of the amazing officers out at whatever school, um, they will come and just stand by. And then that will, um, you know, that has happened occasionally, it doesn't happen a lot usually because um, there is such a connection between parents and administrators usually, um, but know that that is an option. For us as, as officers, you know, we go through all sorts of training, um, de-escalation, crisis intervention training, um, just a tremendous amount of training. And I think it has benefited me, you know, for 27 years being here. Um, it just gives me a different lens of looking at what people might have woken up with today versus how um, how I woke up, right? And, and we all have different lives. It just puts me in their shoes a little bit in a better position, I think. Sorry, far, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt just really quickly. If someone were to call in one of those situations, would they specifically request a civil standby or just call and the officer will make that determination when they get there? If um, if if they know at, like at 10 o'clock, this parent is coming in and that parent is volatile, they can call for a civil standby. But if the parent's there or the, the guardian's there and it's volatile, you just call 911 and say we have a disturbance and um, and just give the the facts of what's happening. Okay. The um, traffic thing, I, I remember what you're talking about. The, uh, it was training. We did it a lot at first for students, uh, all ages, uh, high school down. But I think now that would be handled through our crime prevention unit. And um, fortunately, but unfortunately, um, 
my superstars in crime prevention, uh, one of them just got promoted to the supervisor. She took Esther Mota's place. I don't know if you knew Esther, but um, she, uh, Esther retired, which uh, we all are going to miss her. But Sandra Garcia took over her spot and uh, she was my uh, foothill person. So I actually uh, went to middle school and high school with Sandra. So I know. Well, <laughs> I would like to hear any stories you have offline, but the, all um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but she is, she is uh, going to continue the momentum that that crime prevention has. And I know we can put something together. The question is, is it a community outreach or is it student? Cause those are, those can be different. Right. Um, I, I spent a lot of time at my community meetings in your areas talking about traffic and exactly what you said, like getting off your phone when you cross the street, getting off your phone while you're driving. Um, unscientifically, I feel like that has a lot to do with some of the things that are happening. Uh, the the uh, fatal and non-fatal collisions are related to our phones a lot. We didn't have those back in the you know 2008 or seven or anything before that. And those numbers were different. They were a lot lower. So um, my offer to you is that we uh, come up with kind of a plan. If you do have a, a group, um, either uh, parents or students or yourselves, anything we can do to help you with that. Um, we are on board. We can help you with that for sure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having right. me. Uh, board Vice President Fum. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, Captain Thayer, for co uh, coming here tonight. And uh, thank you and uh, to you and all your officers for the work you, you guys do to keep us safe. Um, you know, you mentioned the crime prevention unit, and I was thinking, uh, does the San Jose Police Department still offer something like a, a, a D.A.R.E. program? I remember back in the, when I was in middle school here in Alum Rock, we used to have, uh, the county sheriff's department used to do the D.A.R.E. program where, uh, you know, well, uh, I remember Deputy Daneman came in and wow. taught us about, you know, drug use, the dangers of drug use and, you know, uh, the, the nitty gritty of the street, uh, you know, uh, as I said, uh, that, that image of the, the junkie is burned in my head forever. So I, so I wonder, is there something that the police department does similar to that? So we can, you, you know, at, attack the, the root causes of delinquency instead of, you know, letting it fester where we can have that partnership between police department and school district. Well, there is, and I feel like you might have a camera in my office because I just brought this up yesterday and had a meeting about it. There's a program we've done in your school district called Team Kids. I taught it at, I personally taught it at Adelante, at San Antonio, uh, Cesar Chavez. I, I taught it for many years with, with a big group of people. There's uh, two of us that teach it at a time. It's a six, six week program that was put on hiatus because of COVID. Um, it is so near and dear to me that, um, now that I'm a captain, I'm trying to pull my weight around a little bit and bring it back. Um, I don't know if I have enough time in the rest of this year to do it because, you know, it, it seems like the school year is ending so quickly to me. But um, I, I have a group of people that are equally as motivated to bring it back. That covers um, things. And just off the top of my head, it covers gangs. It covers drugs. It covers um, social media. It covers choices and challenges. And then um, something else I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But um, it's powerful, you know, and, and you go in with some kids with their arms crossed when you walk in. And then by the time we're done of a six, it's six weeks, one hour a week. Um, they graduate and it's a very positive thing. I go into Target now, like to go shopping. I'll be with my family in any part of the city where I've taught team kids. And some, you know, 22 year old will run up and give me a hug like they were in fifth grade again, right? It's it's for about fifth graders. That's a, it's that powerful of a program. They remember um, us and they remember what we teach. So I hope, um, I hope when I get this rolling again that I could have your support to bring that into your school. It costs you nothing except for a little bit of time. And um, usually I bring ice cream on, on meeting number six. So that's a win or the healthy ice cream for anybody who's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, thank you. I mean, but as I said, you, uh, you know, uh, a, little, a little bit of education goes a long way. And if, uh, you know, just like we had a, our discussion about 
uh, pre-kindergarten education, you know, a dollar spent on uh, on crime prevention uh, means many dollars uh, not having to be used in the prison system. So, you know, of course, I'd be happy to support that. And, you know, we, we uh, I certainly hope that uh, Alan Locke and San Jose Police Department continue to have a fruitful and constructive relationship in the heart of East Side San Jose. We definitely will. Thank you so much, Captain Trayer. Thank you. Remember Chavez. Um, I heard you say, how can we help uh, the traffic? And um, what brought this question to mind was, how can we help make people drive safer? It, one way is by slowing them down. And is it actually possible to put speed bumps in front of every school site? Because I've been to Contra Costa County over there in Lafayette, in front of the schools to slow them down. All of the elementaries had speed, speed bumps. Uh, dur when you drive on this road that a lot of people have a tendency to drive faster as long as long as as well as there's a lot of curves and you can hit somebody so because of the incident that just happened in the Ocala area I'm asking you has um, the county and the city and the police thought of putting speed bumps in front of the schools to slow down the traffic so that these people getting run over won't happen. Right here on White and Madeline, four people had to die before they put in that little light right there on that corner. I mean, it's not gonna be too much more of a cost if they do it when they're repaving the roads. Is, could I speak to somebody about that or would I have to talk to somebody who's in charge of traffic? Thank you for the question. Um, I get I get that question a lot, and I see the benefits of those speed bumps or speed humps. I um, I know that the process to go through that goes through the Department of Transportation. It's not through the police, and it involves the community. And what happens is a certain percentage of the community has to be okay if it's in front of a residential area. Um, and there is a lot of pros and cons to the speed bumps with the noise you know, all day long, all night long, and the people that live there. And uh, you're, you're never going to uh, hear it from me if it slows down. If it slows people down, it's it's going to be a win. But um, if it's okay, I'd like to talk to you, continue that conversation with um, our Department of Transportation, who I work with weekly. Um, you know, I, I wrote a, a new law that went into effect with our city attorneys folks on sideshows and changing intersections. And I do believe it is making a huge impact in certain places to uh, make those type of dents and that type of speeding. But um, it has never been brought up to me about school um, speed bumps before. So let's uh, let's continue it. I know the right people to talk to for our area, for sure. And can you send me an email too? Because uh, I would like to have a conversation with them as well. Oh yeah, I think I think it should. I'll be the facilitator, but I'll I'll uh, I'll get you in touch with the right people for sure. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Uh, Vice President Palm, you had your hand up still from the last time, or all right, uh, board member? Uh, yeah, yes, I, it was from last time. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, nice to meet you, Captain Todd. Um, I've been activated and not uh, in my usual job for the past two years, so. I'm happy to meet you and I'm glad you're here serving our community um, as captain. And um, since uh, Trustee Chavez just brought it up, um, I know that there's a community already that's, that has a list of uh, different signatures for a speed bump around, around Donald Meyer. Um, and I know this because they've contacted me directly. Um, so, you know, maybe I can forward, you know, the email or I know you and Trustee Chavez will look into that, but I'll also forward that to be on the list. And I'm sure that you all have, you know, a list of different car accidents that have happened and, you know, starting, starting somewhere would be good, you know, whether it's Kuala, it's Meyer, anywhere. So thank you for looking into that. Um, also, thank you and your, um, the officers, my daughter, she was in fifth grade prior to uh, COVID. So she was able to go through it with uh, Officer Vallejo as well. Um, so thank you for your work uh, there. She still wears her shirt proudly 
So, um, and she, every day she came, you know, would tell me what she learned about. Um, and, you know, also I know now under Sandra Garcia, you know, as a crime prevention, doing a lot of the classes as well for bullying and, you know, how to, um, you know, uh, even drugs, I, I know that they do that as well. So I know you're all doing a lot. I know that COVID put a stop to many things, but I'm happy to hear that, you know, things are coming back. Um, and yes, absolutely, you know, keep our schools in mind, you know, for these programs. I know uh, Superintendent um, Bauer has been definitely, uh, you know, a great partner with you all for a very long time. So we look forward to having you back on our campuses. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I I don't know uh, if we've done this before, you know, but, um, you know, even if it's once a year, Dr. Power, or, you know, maybe once uh, twice a year, you know, it's good to have this um, collaboration and, uh, you know, hear from you um, and see how we can work with one another uh, to keep our community safe um, and ensure that we're all sleeping, you know, in our home, uh, feeling safe and secure and that our schools are also safe and secure. Um, and that our community can not just attend, right, our, our schools, um, that our children can go and learn and be in class and be able to learn what they're there to do and focus, but also that our uh, families feel um, included in our schools. You know, we are a public school system so that we're able to um, work together and feel safe um, mm -hmm. and that our youth, you know, instead of vandalizing, that we're maybe shifting that and maybe doing, you know, some clean our schools days and things like that. So I look forward to, um, to continue to work together and getting to know each other. Um, and I love that, you know, you have kids, run, well, no, no longer kids, adults running to you, but it's all about that, right? Building the relationship and having that rapport with one another in a positive way. So thank you for your work and I look forward to getting to know you better. Thank you. Yeah, I would, you send me the invite, I will come. So thank you for having me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, um, I think everything has been said already. Great work. I'm really appreciative of the crime prevention team that you have. Um, I, as a former staffer to elected officials, have sat through plenty of, of the presentations. Always learned something different because they kept it fresh and updated. And uh, and so, if members of the public have an opportunity to go out there, uh, Sandra, Sandra Avila, uh, now Karina's on there as well. The whole team is great. Uh, they, they do a great job. I'm going to go ahead and take on public comment at this point uh, so that uh, the captain can go ahead and also listen to some of the uh, public's uh, questions or some of their concerns. Remember that this is uh, public comment and per, our, uh, per the Brown Act, we're not uh, able to engage in dialogue during this time. We'll say go ahead and call on those uh, comments. Yes, Mr. Board President, uh, we have three speakers. Our first speaker is Angelita Echeveste. Angelita, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Uh, good evening. I am sorry. I have my baby in my arms and he wanted to speak, but he's six months, so I apologize. No worries. All right. Uh, next speaker. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dilsa Gonzalez. Ms. Gonzalez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Dilsa Gonzalez, a parent of two students, and hopefully a third really soon. Um, I want to say thank you for the presentation and for bringing um, the information up. Um, and I want to address um, three things I heard. The first one is the uh, programming and maybe call future collaboration. I would like to um, ask to um, please engage parents and to also know that the, um, and understand that the um, prison to pipeline is um, prison to school pipeline is it's really true. It's there. There's a lot of research around it. And um, before we make any any suggestion or changes or addition. Let's explore alternative solutions of um, partnerships and working together to support our students. I heard um, another solution on the root cause, right? On how to prevent this. And I believe Alan Brock is doing a tremendous good job, excellent job at doing this. We have mental health, um, social emotional support, restorative practices in our schools and within our classrooms. 
and um and um counseling within with for our our students however i do believe that partnership with the county the city to not only have them in school but expand them throughout our most needed communities our minority communities is a plus uh, we heard about the COVID re relief task force that is talking about this. So how can we engage in these conversations to support our families and communities? Um, lastly, I heard really great um, uh, alternative solutions from uh, Ms. Um, Trustee Chavez and Trustee um, Lorena Herrera, um, Herrera Loera, sorry, um, about um, solutions, speed bumps. Um, how can we um, bring other things within the table? Let's always think about alternatives and things that could help our kids mentally and social emotionally, because I know for sure we need more than that, more, more programs like that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Gonzalez. Next speaker is Maria Martinez. Ms. Martinez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself when you begin speaking. The timer will begin. Sí, buenas noches, miembros del board, María Martínez, uh, residente del Distrito 5, madre de una estudiante en Lee Madson, nieto en, en Curriton y sobrinas en Madson y San Antonio. Capitán Todd, me es un gusto verlo aquí en, en, en esta reunión del distrito. Uh, yo era la site supervisor en Valley Palms. Uh, tuve el gusto de trabajar a la par con usted y con los residentes de Valley Palms. Gracias por apoyar nuestro distrito. Um, Y quería preguntarle, ¿qué otras soluciones podemos traer para nuestro distrito en lugar de cuando tengamos un padre que viene con um, esos problemas emocionales, verdad? En lugar de llamarles a la policía, este, no sé qué otras soluciones, tal vez uh, prepararnos mejor con un psicólogo o alguien este, uh, profesional, un trabajador social que pueda este, tranquilizarlo y Y, este, y ayudarle en su socio emocional y, y, en lo, y en su salud mental antes de llamarle a la policía. Este, otra de las cosas, um, me gustaría invitarlo a, a usted y a su equipo a ayudar en la distribución que tenemos en Lee Matson, así como lo hacen en Valley Palms. Me gustaría verlos también allí para que uh, la comunidad los vea más envueltos con nosotros. Y gracias también por... Uh, por apoyar tanto a, a nuestra comunidad. Eh, vamos a extrañar a, a Sandra. A tra, ha traído maravillosos entrenamientos a los padres. Este, ojalá que también um, la nueva persona traiga esos entrenamientos y podamos seguir en contacto para uh, seguir creciendo este, a, a los padres con más información sobre cómo prevenir y, este, y traer más programas también a los estudiantes uh, para que haya menos este vandalismo y, y estar todos juntos. Gracias. Gracias por sus comentarios, señora Martinez. Our next speaker is Veronica Amador. Ms. Amador, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Great, thank you. Um, and hi, everyone. My name is Veronica Amador, and I'm a parent of two Allen Rock students. Um, and I also want to echo the from the previous two speakers or comments regarding alternative solutions, right? Especially the one about uh, parents and the standby, um, because um, I feel as a parent, um, you know, again, we're human beings, and somebody can think I'm can be a threat when I'm upset and possibly need uh, somebody to talk to, right? And so how can we have those alternative of mental health specialists being on call um, instead of a police officer that can be very intimidating? And not just that, um, it creates and continues the uh, school to prison pipeline, as we know, right? And not just with the students, but now with the parents as well as being targeted, um, unfortunately, by by others, especially by the police. Um, and I also, again, wanna echo the different alternatives that we have, um, and I appreciate the collaboration uh, that the captain is bringing towards uh, hopefully, you know, facilitating conversations with others. Sorry, I have my newborn with me. Um, others in the community, uh, others in the city that can bring uh, speed bumps that we need, right? Um, and how to support with the traffic that's going around. Um, and also, again, having different classes that 
maybe come from um, other departments that uh, are not just intimidation, because I remember when my parents sat through um, a, a whole drug thing at Joseph George a couple of years ago, um, and I was there and it was very intimidating. It was it wasn't just uh, about talking to students and how to support them not to use drugs, but just intimidation of like, your student is going to die if they use this drug and rather than giving them tools on how to support their student. So thank you again. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Amado. Uh, Mr. Board President, at this time, we have uh, no more requests for public comment. All right. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Trayer, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate your generosity. I know you're really busy. A lot of things taking place and uh, really appreciate that you made a significant amount of time for our, to talk to our community. Just to reiterate, um, I'm very appreciative of the approach that Captain Trey has taken uh, to make his, uh, his team himself very accessible through community events so that uh, individuals should not feel threatened or, uh, or in any way, shape or form, um, you know, uh, being in danger of any sort of uh, the, the interactions that the children have had with Captain Trey and his team have been very positive. He's actually put money out of his own pocket to bring together events uh, to get the community to come out, speak, and, and get to meet law enforcement and have uh, this relationship uh, that uh, allows us for a, for a very positive working environment amongst uh, the community and his, and his officers. So thank you for that work that you're doing. Uh, to really build bridges and help the community feel uh, that they can call on, uh, on on law enforcement when whenever they need the support. So thank you for thank you very much. Uh, all right, you. we're we're gonna. Get, uh, do you have any uh, last comments you want to make? No, uh, just, thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Anessa. Oh, sorry. I was I was just saying thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for spending time with us and looking forward to the future work that we can do together. You've got it. We're going to have a great year. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a good one. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to item 3.01. This is uh, public uh, comments on matters that are not on the agenda that we haven't touched upon already. If there's anybody wishing to speak on any matters that are within the jurisdiction of the Alamark School District but are not on the agenda, then you can do so. You can indicate by raising your hand at this, at this moment. Mr. Board President, at this time, I see no request for public comment. All right, um, let's go ahead and uh, move on to item 4.01. Comments from the Allen Rock Administrators Association. Uh, we've been going for quite some time, so I'm gonna ask all of our speakers we really don't limit uh, the comments, but if we can keep them very brief, um, we we got we still got a lot to take care of, and it's already fairly late. So um, go for it, Alan Rock uh, Administrator Association. Good evening, Board of Trustees, ARUSD staff, and community. My name is Ivan Montes, and I proudly serve as principal of San Antonio Elementary School, home of the Hawks, and president of the Alan Rock. Administrators Association. It is a privilege to speak tonight to represent a group of vibrant educator administrators who work tremendously hard in service of our schools and community. And we are um, excited to share the following updates with you all tonight. At Aptitude, Aptitude kicked off Wellness Week with uh, the soft opening of the Wellness Center. Students participated in tours of the center and daily activities to engage in healthy, activities like sports, acts of kindness, relay races, and more. At DORSA, 39 students just finished a hip hop class series with the Get Down Dance Group. Approximately 91 students are in their last week of after-school intervention provided by teachers via DORSA's Soaring Scholars Program and or Tutor Works. Approximately 35 girls in second and fifth grades just finished the spring series with uh, BAWSI, Bay Area Women's Sports Initiative, and celebrated a field day to SJSU where they watched SJSU versus 
um, Santa Clara University's women's soccer teams compete. Lindale, at Lindale, several of our students, fourth and fifth grade, will be honored at the 2022 National Bilingual Multilingual Learner Advocacy Month Showcase on April 28th for My Name, My Identity Art Contest uh, at SCOE. Lindell is bringing the Latino Family Literacy Project to 20 families this year. This program is designed to establish family routines, vocab development, and English language development for Latino parents with their children, excuse me, with their children. Parents will attend 10 hours of in-person classes taught by two classroom teachers. Attending parents will receive all books and will be awarded a completion certificate at the end of the program. At Painter Elementary, Painter is, uh, is receiving over 250 new T-Mobile data enabled devices as part of the district's innovative learning schools initiative. Teachers are working with students to develop responsible habits with their devices with the ultimate practice of taking devices home nightly to enable access to more, uh, to more 21st century aligned activities and projects. On March 31st, 100% of Painter students and staff participated in uh, their locally publicized March for Cesar Chavez Day. Mr. Uh, Jimmy from IT supported with live stream, live stream to ARTV and Mr. Mamluko published a final video edit to the community. Leading up to the day, the ASB committee shared instructional resources and lessons about uh, Cesar Chavez and his significance in advocating labor for labor rights as a former ARUSD community member. Students and teachers continue to learn high quality science instruction uh, bi-weekly through our Genentech fully funded partnership with uh, nonprofit Science from Scientists. This uh, $35,000 value program was able to assign Dr. Esther, who holds a PhD in ecology from Cornell University. At Russo McEntee, on March 31st, students and teachers along with our city force planted, uh, participated in planting trees at Russo. On April 6th, we celebrated Autism Awareness Day. The teachers presented lessons to all students at our school building uh, their knowledge and compassion for our students on the spectrum. On April 12th, Russo will be hosting an exhibition night and open house virtually to showcase our efforts as an environmental justice and sustainability school. We will be celebrating Dia del Niño on uh, April 29th with every child getting a toy from the school. And uh, lastly, at Russo, uh, they will be celebrating Reading Under the Stars on April 28th with every child getting a book from the school. Uh, now moving on to Ryan Steam Academy. Steam uh, Ryan is holding a Steam Showcase. Um, their Steam Showcase took place on April 13th. They are looking forward to celebrating Dia del Niño on April 27th, and they are excited to report that over 60 students are taking advantage of their springboard intervention program. At San Antonio Elementary School, um, our fifth graders just returned from an exciting science camp where they learned about uh, ecosystems, the flora and fauna, and within our local community, and had 100% students attend. Additionally, today we were able to provide one book for every student through our partnership with Reading Partners. Students were excited to select a book, and many spent their recess time reading to each other and discussing their book. On March 30th, we offered a restorative justice session for families, which builds on the sessions our team has been engaging in to learn about the restorative approaches uh, we are utilizing at our school to support the social emotional needs of our youth. Restorative justice continues to be a focus for San Antonio and we are committed to embedding these practices into our school fabric. And that is what we have to report on behalf of the Elm Rock Administrators Association. Thank you for your time. Thank you, 4.02 Teamsters. Go for it, Tom. Good evening, oh, um, members of the board, board president, and um, thank you for uh, for a uh, for a great uh, so far board meeting. I mean, this is the first time I, I've listened to you guys for the past four hours. 
uh, close to four hours, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's 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 you know it's very productive and uh, and it's is interesting. So with that, uh, I just wanted to let the board know that um, on behalf of Teamster, I, I wanted to uh, uh, you know um, acknowledge that uh, that uh, we are looking forward to um, you know another negotiation session with the district, and, and that uh, we we are always here to to support the district, and that the um, that we ask that uh, the board member and the management keep in mind that you know uh, coming to work on a daily basis to support the district is is what we we're, we're all about. Um, you know we're here for the student, uh, feed the student, transport the students, uh, fix our facilities, um, anything that has to do with maintaining it. You know Teamsters there. You know feed our kids, uh, the the whole nine yard. And anyway. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we're looking forward to another session with uh, the district and, and that they that the um, the members are excited to 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 move forward for our last uh, school year uh, in the contract. So um, looking forward to it. And and again, uh, Trustee Bejarano, thank you. You you acknowledged me earlier, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I mean, it's 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 interesting. You guys do a great job you know the job that you do is is very um very hard and and, and sometimes tough decision is is what you have to do but to to you know maintain our school maintain our, our facilities or you know keep keep the uh, the staff the students you know learning employed the whole nine yard i appreciate all that you do and thank you again for your time this evening on behalf of teamster uh have a good evening and uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 4.03, California School Employees Association. Sharon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, President Quintero, Dr. Bauer, members of the board. I just have a couple of quick things because I know it's getting late. Um, thank you to Sandra Garcia, Dr. Ballesteros, and Mr. Sanchez for their presentations. I did read all the information in the board book, but it was a lot to absorb. It was so nice to have it presented and be able to see it on the screen and get all the information from the professionals. It, it was a great presentation and thank them for that. And then also want to thank payroll and uh, human resources for their exp expediting and implementing the new salary schedules for our members. I know that that is not an easy task as we have members that work one hour, two hours, four hours, five, six, seven, and eight, and going through each individual person by their hours and putting that all together and um, sending it out earlier than we had anticipated. I know our members are grateful to have gotten their money prior to the break next week. Having that little extra will hopefully they can do something fun and enjoy their vacation and the Easter break. And um, we also are going to enter into, into negotiations. We have a session set for the 27th. Look forward to, I don't know if Mr. Tarika will be in the first one as he's going to be brand new, but we are definitely looking forward to working with him in the near future. And um, I hope you all have a great Easter. And with that, I will say, I'll see you next month. Thank you. All right, see you next month, Aaron. Um, moving on to item 4.04, .04. I was informed by Jocelyn that she would not be here and Sandra wouldn't be here as well. So given that there would be the representatives of area, we'll go ahead and, unless Jocelyn's here or Sandra is here, all right, I don't see them responding. So, uh, Dr. Barr. Thank you so much, Board President. I have, my comments are split between me and Ms. Finen, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about Copita. So very, very quickly, um, I wanna uh, announce and let everybody know that um, I'm gonna be hosting an informational session about the board members' responsibilities and roles for any parent or community member who wants to attend. This will be April 26th 
more information will be uh, given to you. I have asked board president to help me uh, with the facilitation and I have asked uh, Trustee Herrera Loera as a former uh, SPARC member uh, to give her experience about being, you know, uh, a parent in our district with a child and now sitting in the board so that the parents have uh, a, you know, a, 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 a view of, of what the process was like and, and what her role was and is now. So I'm very excited. I wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of this. Um, more information via Parent Square will be shared with you by, by tomorrow, um, April 26th. Thank you. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Danielle Finnan, who is going to be talking to us about a brand new, amazing opportunity for all of our students. Ms. Finning. Thank you, Dr. Bauer, uh, Board of Trustees and community. Uh, my name is Danelle Finnan. I'm the coordinator of our visual and performing arts, PE and sports programs. And I'm here to share with you, like Dr. Bauer said, a very exciting opportunity uh, that's coming up. So this year we're going to be hosting our first annual Copita T48 ARUSD. And this is a World Cup style soccer tournament that will be taking place on Friday, April 29th, Saturday, April 30th, and Sunday, May 1st at Overfault High School in collaboration with Telemundo. 16 of our school sites will be participating this year in grades three through eight. And in addition to our soccer games, we will be celebrating Dia del Nino with a resource fair featuring community organizations, activities for young children, and a food truck. Flyers have been sent out via Parent Square and more uh, detailed information will come soon. Uh, I also wanted to thank Mr. Gwendoline, Principal of Meyer Elementary, Mr. Araujo, Coordinator of Student Services, and Dr. Bauer for making this event possible. Thank you so much. All right, uh, moving on to item 4.06, Board of Trustees, comments, communications. Uh, let me check you as I see you. Oh, all right, Board of Vice President Pam, go for it. Oh my, May I will make this as quick as possible, uh, given the uh, length of our agenda. So first of all, uh, since this is our last meeting prior to spring break, I wanna wish uh, uh, everyone in Alum Rock a uh, happy Easter, uh, you know, which is coming up this weekend. Uh, I wanna congratulate Carlos Tripaldi and Tom Nguyen on being nominated for uh, Classified School Employee of the Year. Uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your hard work and services to our children. And uh, I certainly hope that uh, you'll take the award home to Alum Rock. Uh, also, I want to extend my best wishes to Aptitude et Goss on the opening of their wellness center, uh, Hubbard and Lindale schools for their uh, students um, being part of the Bilingual Learner Advocacy Month Showcase. Uh, I want to congratulate the Adelante Boys basketball team and the Ocala Girls basketball team for winning the district championship in uh, this uh, in March Madness. Um, but also uh, all our schools are winners. It was great to see our parents and our kids uh, come out uh, you know, at the, to open our springtime and to see us all back as one district for the first time since uh, the pandemic. Uh, you know, uh, the board president, I and the board clerk, Herrera Loera, had the uh, great opportunity to visit uh, Cesar Chavez uh, Renaissance at Matson, San Antonio Elementary in Lucha on Cesar Chavez Day, uh, honoring the uh, Oh, you know, uh, in commemoration of uh, the area where the United Farm Workers got their start, it was a uh, great to see Lucha had they have their Cesar Chavez Day Parade and on, and to uh, connect with uh, our kids in in and around the Mayfair area. Uh, you know, I certainly hope to to see our kids again at some few, uh, you know, in in the near future. Uh, 
Uh, we also, I also had the uh, opportunity to be part of a nature hike with uh, Adelante II and Russo McEntee kids. Uh, it was also a, a great opportunity to see uh, our kids have an opportunity to get uh, hands-on uh, nature learning experiences at Allen Rock Park. And a segue to that, uh, Russo McEntee and the City Forest recently uh, had uh, tree planting, which was, a, you know, which I had the pleasure of uh, seeing along with Vice Mayor Chappie Jones and uh, staff from the office of Councilwoman Carrasco. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'd like to make a uh, plug for uh, interested community members to uh, sign up to be, uh, to be part of our bond oversight committee. Uh, our district is moving forward with great projects and uh, we'd love to have as much community input as possible. Uh, you know, closing off, uh, I want to, uh, I wish all our schools well for the upcoming Copita or Allen Rock Cup. I look forward to uh, being out there with, uh, with our kids. Uh, you know, April 29th to May 1st, and also uh, looking forward to a parent university at Rancho del Pueblo Golf Course on um, May the 14th. So uh, with that, thank you very much, Mr. President. Comments from members of the board? Board member, Ed Thank you, board president. Um, I just want to start off with giving my condolences to the family, you know, of those that we uh, lost due to that traffic incident across the street from or by uh, Ocala. Um, I know that they're very near and dear to our hearts here in Alam Rock. And so um, I look forward in, you know, ensuring that, as Trustee Chavez mentioned earlier, that we're able to do something right and that their death is not in vain. Um, also want to congratulate the Lindell and Hubbard students who are going to be recognized at the Santa Clara County Office of Education. Congratulations. Um, and in regards to Copita, I want to thank Dr. Bauer. You know, I know as trustees, you know, we send her a thousand and one emails, I'm sure, because I send her 500 myself. So I'm sure you all send her your own um, a week or so. And uh, to keep up with things, I know um, Erika Diaz, you know, one of the leaders there in, in, in uh, Telemundo, um, contacted me, you know, once upon a time and said, hey, Corina, I really want to um, bring resources and services to uh, Alam Rock, to the east side of San Jose. You know, um, where do I go? What do I do? And, you know, we met with Dr. Bauer and Dr. Bauer was on it. And, um, you know, now we're having this copita and, you know, so many other things that have happened since that conversation. And I also mentioned that because, you know, part of our, our job as trustees, right, is to bring resources to our families here. Um, and we're, you know, at least now, you know, compared to when I first started, I feel like we're at a place where um, folks want to come, come to Ellen Rock and, um, and provide and be a partner, a part of and be in partnership with. And so, um, you know, with what we passed earlier, which is really exciting, um, you know, I look forward to continuing to partner with and collaborate with others to bring those resources to, to our children and families here in Ellen Rock. Um, and just to reiterate what uh, Vice President um, Fam already mentioned, it was awesome to be uh, in the classrooms, you know, out in the schools on Cesar Chavez Day as a proud daughter of um, a farm worker, you know, who worked in the farms. I'm um, seeing the children, you know, so proudly um, singing songs of Cesar Chavez, holding uh, different posters and chanting and holding their fist up and feeling proud. It was so beautiful to see. Um, so thank you, uh, Dr. Bauer, for coordinating that. Uh, but I think that one of like my favorite things that I saw that day um, was entering a classroom and seeing a teacher in action teaching ethnic studies. You know, it, for me, it was like, wow, you know, from it having gone to, you know, from an idea to a community coming together, uh, you know, to it being put in policy and, you know, the committee, the task force, the uh, different members um, to actually seeing that teacher teaching those students, it was just amazing because to me it was done, you know, in such a, 
quick turnaround, even though there was COVID in the middle, you know, of all those things, but um, it was just really beautiful to see and to see the students raising their hands and participating and answering questions um, really made my, my heart happy. So um, congratulations to all the teachers and all the students and everybody, you know, doing um, all that you're there at the schools to do. And I hope you have a well-deserved break next week and that you do something fun for yourselves. Thank you. Further comments from the board? All right, seeing none, then I'm gonna go ahead and close off the section with my own comments. Um, was uh, really enjoyed uh, going out there to Alamar Park with some of the, the uh, some of our, our district students. It uh, really kind of, the partnership with Chief Cody Creek Beautiful was uh, great. Uh, it really allows you to kind of find out what's in nature. When you go out there, you really enjoy it, but once you start, you know, taking a sample of the water and taking a look at what's in there, or uh, looking at the, you know, little bugs and the, the symbiotic relationship that they have with the, 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 the trees that are naturally there and stuff like that sort. Where the plants it really kind of takes it to a whole other level. So thank you, Coyote Creek, uh, keep Coyote Creek beautiful for the partnership. That uh, I hope that this is just the beginning of a, a long term partnership that uh, grows uh, with Elm Rock. Um, it was great to go out there, and so my colleagues have already explained it, and I'm not going to go more in detail. It was it was really really the energy was just uh, um, you know you could feel it right there with all the kids, their signs, the marches that were taking place on the, on the campuses. It was great. And uh, I want to thank all the partners and all the uh, folks that are uh, the members that are part of the, the Teacher and Workforce Housing Committee that has been meeting. We've, hold, we've held our, our two meetings so far, and it's been great to learn more about the potential of what might be and what are the possibilities. And so looking forward to continue to learn more about that and then eventually bringing a recommendation to this body in the future once it's, uh, you know, once, once we receive, receive the, the information that we're, that we're out there looking for. So um, it's going great. And so looking forward to seeing what that, what, what the, the information yields uh, that we're looking for. So, um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item 5.01 is the public hearing with CSCA chapter 305, Initially, initial bargaining proposal to open negotiation with ARUSD for the period of July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. I'm assuming that at this point, we just open up the hearing, correct? And then eventually we close it. So I'll go ahead and open up this hearing at 919. Go ahead and move on to item 5.02 and I'll leave that open for right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hearing for Keepsters Local 150 initial initial bargaining proposal to open negotiation with ARUSD for the period of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Opening up that hearing at June uh, at 919. Is there any public comment with regard to these items? Mr. Board President, at this time, I see no request for public comment. All right, uh, seeing no uh, public comment, then I'll go ahead and close um, these hearings at 920 for both item 5.01 and 5.02. All right, uh, we don't have to take action on this, correct? They're just public hearings? All right. Um, moving on to item 6.01, approved resolution number 43-21-4-22, declaring Black April Fall Saigon Memorial Week. Uh, I'm assuming that this item will be uh, Board of Vice President Fong. You're going to go ahead and speak on this item? Yes. Thank you, so Mr. Mr. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. So uh, uh, my uh, honorable colleagues, uh, residents of Allen Rock, so um, you know, I, I bring this resolution uh, in honor of the upcoming uh, 47th anniversary at the fall of Saigon on uh, April 30th, uh, you know, um, to be, to be, uh, to give a brief 
history of it. Um, April 30th, 1975 uh, was the fall of Saigon, which ended the Vietnam War and resulted in the uh, unfortunate defeat of the Republic of Vietnam during the uh, Vietnam War. Uh, now, as, as we all know, the Republic of Vietnam, or also known as South Vietnam, was the uh, uh, non-communist uh, democracy, which unfortunately fell on that uh, a very, very sad day. And so, um, you know, in, in a twist of history, uh, you know, uh, on, on such a sad date, um, this event also triggered, uh, uh, changed the face, not, not, ju you know, not just of Alan Rock, but also uh, this country, uh, you know, uh, over the years since 1975, Vietnamese have, fleeing communism and seeking freedom and democracy have settled in this country and, uh, in, you know, a particular significance settled here in San Jose, uh, you know, be, you know, and changing the face of the, changing the, the face of this city for the better. Uh, I would not be here if it were not for that event, but also uh, the fact that uh, one out of five of our kids are from Vietnamese uh, descent. Uh, we today have um, a Vietnamese dual language immersion program at uh, Painter reflecting the uh, the many contributions of the Vietnamese community uh, of Eastern San Jose and of course in Alam Rock. Uh, also, I felt that it's important that uh, this, uh, the sacrifices uh, by uh, South Vietnamese veterans and also uh, American veterans. Um, many families in Alam Rock were touched by this war. Uh, many residents of Alam Rock served uh, bravely in uh, our, our, our country's armed forces uh, for a noble cause and the cause in the defense of democracy, of freedom, and uh, in opposition to communism. Um, so in light of uh, recent events, you know, as we know, the, the world, uh, the world is uh, not at peace, especially in, in Eastern Europe. I, I think it, it bears particular importance that we take the time to teach our kids about the, you know, uh, what it means to live in a, uh, free country, what it means to live in a place where we have the right uh, to choose our leaders and to choose the direction where we want to go, and also to honor the, the sacrifices that people have made over the years uh, in defense of those rights, and as well as to uh, uh, give our respects to uh, the positive uh, you know, the great contributions that the Vietnamese community, uh, Vietnamese in East San Jose and in Alam Rock have brought to our community. So uh, it is uh, with that that uh, I bring this item to uh, the board. And I certainly uh, urge my colleagues to uh, vote yes. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Do you want to go ahead and make a motion? Uh, mo a uh, motion to approve resolution number 43 21 slash 22. Do I have a second? Second. All right, motion being made and seconded. Uh, any further comments from members of the board? All right, uh, uh, board member Chavez. Uh, when I first looked at this, uh, I asked myself, what does this have to do with the teaching of the students to read, to write, and do math? But um, I do support the, the Asian Americans, so I will be supporting this this time. Thank you. Board Member Bajarano. Yeah, I was gonna, um, in the interest of time, forego a comment, but I will say, and I think it's kind of um, addresses a little bit uh, Trustee Chavez's thoughts. Uh, I remember when I spoke earlier about going to Ryan and McCollum in those years, 
um, was right around the time when we as students started seeing some new faces in our classrooms that we weren't used to. I, and I didn't, I didn't know the geopolitics of the time, but I knew that there was these new families who spoke this language that I didn't understand. And, and, you know, they, one year they were, they had, you know, their Vietnamese name and the next year they had an English name. And there was all these things I just didn't understand about the experience. And obviously after many years of having, you know, lived side by side with this community and been friends with individuals from the community, I know better, but I think the importance of these types of resolutions and certainly our ethnic studies program is that our students now, um, when whether we have different populations coming to the United States or to San Jose, that they understand some of those experiences of those people and just in general have a more global understanding that matches our, um, our vision and our mission statement that we as a board created that's reflective of a global um, education that we're trying to provide. So I just wanted to share that this resolution made me think of those years when I had that experience and not really having the opportunity to learn what was the experience of this community and now the opportunity to, to change that and, and allow our students to be aware um, of, of the, our neighbors and, and, our, and our friends. So that's it, thank you. More uh, Thank you. I just wanna um, thank Vice President Pham for bringing this uh, resolution forward um, for the many reasons that Bajarano mentioned. Um, and just, you know, in general, uh, for making our district more inclusive, a safe place for all, um, you know, and I can go on and on, but I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, Vice President Pham. Yeah, I'll uh, uh, conclude this portion of comments with my comments. Thank you for bringing forward this uh, resolution. I think that it's important to recognize those major um, events that uh, are significant uh, for uh, our um, for large uh, segments of our population here in our community, uh, it allows us to better understand what uh, many have gone through and the significance of these dates for our friends, our neighbors, uh, those who we went to school with. Um, I happen to interact with uh, you know many of my classmates that I became friends, and it was through the the conversations we got to know more of each other. And uh, so we might ask, well, what does this have to do with reading and writing? There's a lot of things that we do in our schools that don't pertain to exactly reading and writing. Well, for example, the Pledge of Allegiance that we say every morning and we recite is part of the political socialization that we provide to our students. It doesn't necessarily uh, follow along with the, the concept of reading and writing or arithmetic, whatever it may be, uh, but it's part of a broader process of creating well-rounded individuals that are part of a broader community. And so this is very much important so that uh, maybe the children who aren't uh, necessarily as well versed about what happened uh, that uh, day on April 30th, 1975. So that they then learn what the significance is for their neighbors and their friends. So I think it's very important and I'm very supportive of this resolution. With that, um, I'll go ahead and have a second and have a motion in a second. Oh, a call for public comment. Also, do we have any public comment on this item? Uh, yes, Board President. Uh, we have Ms. Veronica Talton. Ms. Talton, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, timer will begin. Good evening, Board President Quintero, Vice President Pham. Uh, Karina Herrera Loera, er er Ernesto Bejarano, and Trustee Chavez, Dr. Bauer, and all of our Alum Rock family. I had not planned to speak this evening. I just want to thank uh, Vice President Pham for bringing this forward. Um, this shows that in our school district, everyone is valued, is heard, and is seen, regardless of their racial identity. It shows that we embrace those who suffered through the Vietnam War and that the lives of those who are Asian American and those who are not uh, 
will learn great value in the sufferings of others. I'm so grateful that our district supports ethnic studies and valuing those of a racial identity, that everyone is being treated the same. And I'm also thankful that we are in a district where we have the opportunity to celebrate differences, whether someone is 70% of the racial demographic, one in five, or the only one. Thank you to everyone. I would like to wish all of my area colleagues and the school community a safe and happy Easter. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Talton. Our next speaker is Angelita Echeveste. Ms. Angelita Echeveste, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, timer will begin. Good evening. I, as well as the previous um, person who spoke, I was not planning, not at once, um, to speak at all. But I just want to thank you, um, Vice President Sam, for bringing this resolution, for having this conversation. Um, and also, like, I appreciate hearing uh, Trustee Chavez's comment because that was eye-opening and it was disheartening. Um, when we look at a banking system of education versus what we're trying to do and what you all have done with ethnic studies, um, anything and everything could be associated with, that, with our education, um, with math, with reading, with writing, and, um, and to learn about various cultures, my culture or other's cultures, that, that's what helps um, the, I can't even articulate it, but knowing others and knowing myself is what really, really helps with the biases and the racism and changing systems that's going to make the world a better place for my daughter. Um, the more she knows of others and, and understands others' pains and, and where they come from and where she comes from, that's what will unite us. That's what makes, makes the change in everything, in, like in the world, you know? Um, I am so grateful and it is an honor to be part of this district. It is an honor to, to take my daughter to school every single day because of the work that you all do, because of the resolutions that you bring and because of changes that you, you have um, and that you think of community and you continue to um, open space for us to participate, to engage in a meaningful and intentional way. Just thank you so much for that. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Angelita. Uh, at this time, Mr. Board President, we have no more requests for public comment. All right, uh, let's go ahead and call for the vote. I'll call you as I see you. Board Member Verano. Aye. A board Member Verano. Aye. Vice President Pham. Aye. Trust, uh, board Member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, the motion passed unanimously. All right, uh, moving on to item 6.02, discussion and consideration of resolution number 44-21, authorizing the remote virtual tele teleconference meeting of the board and district committees subject to the Brown Act for the period of April 16, 2022 through May 15, 2022. Um, is there a motion on the side of Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Member Mahano, second by Board Member Chavez. Uh, comments from members of the board. Uh, board member, uh, board vice president. Bob. You know, uh, I'll keep my comments brief. Uh, you know, I'm torn on this, but uh, you know, given the the, you know, city council, San Jose City Council has looked at its uh, uh, mask mandates and the. Uh, general situation where most school boards are in uh, in session in person. Uh, you know, I've already expressed in past meetings that uh, I strongly believe that the uh, business that the people should be transacted in the boardroom. It should be transacted in the most transparent way possible. And uh, it behooves us to, you know, uh, meeting, you know, uh, 
to gather again, meet in person, uh, you know, in, especially in light of the fact that our teachers are teaching classes in person again. Uh, and so uh, it is for those reasons that uh, in, uh, I won't be voting in support of uh, this resolution, uh, you know, reflecting the, which I, I believe the need that uh, we, you know, it's important that we come back, uh, we come back, we set in, you know, we, if we are expecting our teachers to teach in person, this, uh, the work of the people should be done in person. Thank you very much. All right, further comments from members of the board? Uh, board Clerk Romero. Thank you. Um, I, I do, I, I'm in agreement with a trustee famine that, you know, we should be doing it in person and all of the above. Um, for our district specifically, um, you know, I know he mentioned city council and um, for those of us that have been into, in those chambers, we know that room is huge and they're able to meet in person and do the work. Uh, for, but for our school district, our room is small and that would only, you know, allow us to have um, a, a small number of, of people present. Um, so, you know, in, in currently we also know that the new variant, right? Our numbers are going up, unfortunately, in our communities. And we also know that our community here in Alam Rock has been one of the most um, impacted by COVID, unfortunately, and still continues to be. And so, um, I'm in agreement with, you know, Trustee Famine that we definitely should. However, to keep, you know, our community, continue to keep our community safe, especially our district, you know, I would hate to um, expose our staff here or any of that. Um, it's still not safe, you know, and um, for that reason, I will be continuing to support um, us uh, continuing to be virtually um, for our next board meeting. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, further comments from the board? I'm seeing none, then I'm gonna go to public comment. Yes, Mr. Uh, board President, we have uh, public comment. Ms. Lisa Gonzalez, you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself when you begin speaking. The timer will begin. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Lisa Gonzalez. Was again a parent of two students in Alamo School um, District. I want to say thank you, um, Mr. Pat, Trustee Pam, for um, echoing and being able to say it aloud that if our children and our teachers are out there giving classes in person, these meetings should be held in person as well. As you will notice, um, today a lot of people weren't able to speak due to, to updates, due to apps and due to um, not having internet access. And um, some of the meetings we have, even trustees having to deal with um, internet access and not being able to talk or participate 100%. Um, once again, there's alternative solutions for having a small uh, place. Uh, we could do it in a cafeteria with it in school. We could do, um, there's a lot of um, a lot of alternatives where this, um, where this meeting can help in person and doesn't really need to be in a board meeting where there's um, a small, a small, um, a small community member showing up and risking everybody. I understand that risk, but um, I will wish that the way we're talking about the risk and not risking yourselves or other staff will be the same when we talk about our kids going to school and not risking them as well. Um, once again, um, Trustee Fam, thank you for acknowledging. Thank you for bringing it to the board, and thank you for being on side of community that has been more impacted. Um, and that don't really have access to technology or to um, internet out there. Thank you. Have a really good evening. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Board President, at this time, we have no more requests for public comment. All right, uh, there be no further comments. Uh, the motion, did I, all right, help me out. Uh, do we have a motion on this item? Yeah. Yes, Board Member Mejorano, second by Board Member Chavez. Thank you for that. Um, I'm torn with this uh, because I do believe that um, uh, we need to get back in person. Um, I, I also acknowledge that there's a lot of participation when you have this uh, format 
more than we've ever had in person. And so, you know, that's, that's also something we also recognize. We have to recognize. Um, but more importantly, I think that the, the, the security and uh, the need for us to maintain control over our closed session comments necessitate us to come back uh, in person. I have, a few, I have some serious concerns around our closed session and uh, the security around our closed session meetings um, as of late. And so it's for that reason and only that reason um, that I'm going to be voting uh, in opposition to this item. I believe that we need to come back in person so that closed session items are only open to us uh, uh, board members that are supposed to be there. Um, and so it's for that reason I'm going to vote in favor of no longer continuing uh, this resolution. It can read the, I can read the votes. It's going to continue, but it's for that particular reason that I'm going to support. Um, that I'm not going to support this item still. Um, I'll go ahead and call for the votes as I see you. Board Member Bajarano. Aye. Board Member Herrera Lora. Aye. Uh, board, mem board Vice President Fam. No. Board Member Chavez. Aye. And with myself, what do you know? The motion passes on a 3 2. All right. Uh, moving on to item 7.01 uh, update from program manager regarding solar energy plan. Uh, Dr. Bauer is the program manager here. Yes. All right. Please give us an executive update on this item. Uh, this was requested by Trusty Pejerano. I don't know if he wants to do that. I'll be happy to. All right. Board member, how do you want to open it up? Um, I'll just start by saying, um, obviously, this, for anybody who's been around for a little while, this is an item that we had um i had brought some time back as a something for us to look into as a board to consider the options um but you know there were so many other things uh that we needed to take care of or that we're still continuing to take care of um that that we decided to kind of um work on it at a slower pace in the background but continue working and now that we have a lot of the things in place that uh, were of concern initially when I brought it to the to the board, I thought it would be a good time to begin to relook at this um, for a lot of different reasons. But that's why I requested um, for Dr. Bauer to put this on the agenda. And so I guess I will, um, or Dr. Bauer and President Quintero. So I guess I'll, Dr. Bauer, I'll pass it over to you at this point. Thank you, Trusty Bejerano. Uh, we have Terry Mathers with us. She is our program manager from coming. So Terry, welcome to Alum Rock and please let us uh, give us the information regarding solar energy at Alum Rock. Okay. So um, Dr. Bauer actually asked me to kind of give an idea of what could happen. Right now we don't have any specific plans. So this is just, the beginning, the beginning of a plan, so to say. So we presented um, our recommendations, which is really for the district to actually purchase their own solar system. The reason behind that is sort of multifold. There's um, school districts can go about um, installing solar three different ways. There's many different ways, but three main different ways. One is actually purchasing it yourself, installing it yourself and maintaining it yourself. And in the past, this has been done through um, Prop 39 um, grants and, um, and other miscellaneous grants that may be available through PG&E and such. But the main one for school districts has been Prop 39. And uh, there are some no interest loans that are available for it if you decide to purchase it yourself. There's also uh, what's called um, PP, um, power purchase agreements. And basically you would go into an agreement with a company and they would basically install the solar panels for you. And they would also maintain them and plan them. And then in the, the agreement part is, is that you would agree to purchase power from them at a set price that would be renegotiated every every year or whatever the term of the negotiation was, but you'd be actually purchasing how much power you use. Then the third option is the lease option. 
And the lease option um, is, is similar to a purchase power purchase agreement, except for you're actually leasing the panels. You're agreeing to pay a set amount for the lease, no matter what, how much power that you use. That's sort of the least um, advantageous way to go, because if you use less power, you're actually still paying the same price. Um, the last two options are negotiated. So you will have to renegotiate your lease um, or your agreements, whichever, whether it's a lease or agreement, but your agreements every few years or every 10 years. Um, there's no upfront cost, so that's a good part, but there's no cost savings part. So one of the things about if you purchase your own power, if you purchase your own panels, um, one of the things that you'll see be seen is one of the big projects that we'll be doing is sort of, is our HVAC projects, which is actually going to switch a lot of your HVAC from gas to electric, but it's going to be very it's very energy efficient. As we go into installing more energy efficient items into schools, your power use should be going down. And so you should be producing more power. And so you're going to get a net energy. The state has net energy metering. Some people have said, well, that's going away. That's been tabled for a while. It has been tabled. They're not talking about reactivating it. So you'll actually get a credit back for any power that you don't use. You're actually going to get a check. Well, you'll get a check once a year. But I'm sorry, <laughs> so I'm sorry to interrupt. Just really, like, which plan are you are referring to right now? Um, the net, the net energy metering. So that's if you purchase your own power panels, if you own them okay. and you're actually producing them, you don't get net. You don't get. You are not able to use name the, the NEM for um, lease agreements or for power purchase agreements. That's sort of where they get their money. It's like extra money for them. That's why um, your, your, you could negotiate that into your agreement, but I haven't seen that done before. So that's just important to know. Um, so um, I guess the, the, in, in, in any case with all of these systems, no matter how you go into agreement, you are likely going to have you will have to go to DSA, okay, because it does involve structure, and you will likely, depending on the school, have to do an ADA upgrade to your parking lot and your paths to the entrance to the school. So that's not a bad thing long term, but it 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 does cost. Uh, it will add to the cost of the project. I think. Is there anything else, um, Dr. Bauer, that you wanted me to cover? No, I think I think that the questions from the board members are going to generate the information that they need. Okay. So, uh, board member Bannon, you still have comments? Uh, go yes, for it. I have a question. Um, so, thank you, Ms. Mathers, uh, for that. And so, a couple of questions that I have. Um, first of all, I know when we initially started to look at this a year or so ago, um, we were starting. Um, our, our dive into this looking at PPAs specifically because um, at the time and, and you know potentially similarly now, the resources to pay upfront and or to secure a loan, we um, you know we weren't sure that Alan Rock was in the position to do that, which is why, we were starting off with PPAs as just to look at what that would look like. And so I guess the question is, I don't know, if I understand this is a, a starting point, um, but I'm not sure if you have had the opportunity to specifically look at our current position and whether or not we even could entertain the possibility of a grant or a loan, or um, I know we, we don't have money up front to, to, to pay for this, um, so that's question one, if you had looked into that, um, and just where we are now, how realistic that is. And then number two, I, did I hear you mention that with the PPAs, there's no, uh, no savings at all to the district. And if that's the case, then what would be the benefit to a district other than, I guess, making an impact on the carbon footprint of the district? 
So yeah, those are my two questions. Yeah, so I'll defer, defer the money one to Dr. Bauer. But um, with regards to um, the PPA, so the advantages is that you're not paying for the upfront cost and they're negotiating, you're negotiating a fixed rate for your power. So the advantage to you in, in, in a comparison to a lease is that you're going to pay for the exact power that you're using. So the more efficient that you're using, your power bill will go up or your power. And if you're not efficient, your power bill will go your power bill will go up if you're not efficient. It will go down if you are efficient. So with so there, the advantage is, is that you're not paying for the equipment and the upgrades up front. They are producing all that. They are charging you more for the power. So don't think this is a deal. They're more, charging more you more than for the power than hmm. PG&E is because you, you're basically getting the equipment. Right. So it's sort of you're paying for the power, but you're paying for the power kilowatt by kilowatt as opposed to a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Right. So you're still paying for it. Um, you're just it's not it's not the upfront cost that you got. So I, what is the benefit to districts who choose to use a PPA? That they because they don't they either don't get the grants or they're not able to get a loan. Now there are loans available that are 0%. And with the current push for solar from both the federal and the state, um, there is talk about um, of opening up Prop 39 on the state level again. And in that case, if we're gonna do solar, we certainly want to have our plan for solar so that when Prop 39 or whatever number they're going to call it, the next phase comes up. We have all of our information together so that we can actually submit um, and apply for the grants. Okay. I'm st- I think I'm still not quite clear, though, because I talked to a couple districts who who chose, I mean, all the different plans, the ones that purchased their own, um, the ones that did PPAs, and and the ones that did PPAs, they, they did say that they were generating savings because the amount that they were paying to the solar company was less than they had been paying to PG&E, significantly less in some instances. So I guess that's still the question that I'm trying to understand. If, if you're saying that it's more expensive than PG&E, I'm wondering if either- So, they- it, it, so it really depends on what, ha- what you negotiate in your deal. And it also depends on what you're currently paying for PG&E, right? So, Right mm-hmm. now, our power pricing is our, in particular, our power pricing is very volatile for with um, with PG&E, you know. And so, what what could happen? So, usually, you're going to negotiate a certain price for a certain period of time. In the past, our pricing has been fairly stable. Our pricing is not stable at the moment. So, since they're negotiating for a certain amount of time, they're they're not going to take that risk. They don't want to negotiate every year or every month. So it's really, frankly, all about the negotiation that you have with your P- with the PPA um, a company, right? Okay. I mean, so every district does it differently. Um, I just got done doing it with the district and we explored all the different options and they chose to actually, um, they did get Prop 39 money because they had all their ducks in a row. And um, they were able to, um, it was bond. So they pre-financed it with bond money. They did the project very early on. So when they got the project done, you get your Prop 39 money. They got the Prop 39 money and they were able then, and now we're finishing up the bond money. So we've gotten our the money and now they're finishing up their bond program with the money that was reimbursed by the Prop 39 program. Okay. So then speaking of finishing up, just to finish on my comments, and I'm what I think I'm hearing then is at this point, you haven't had the opportunity, and correct me if I'm wrong, you haven't had the opportunity to consider Alan Rock's financial position to factor into your recommendation yet. I'm going to defer to Dr. Bauer on that. I was just asked to look at the three different programs. So Dr. Bauer, do you want to touch base on that? Uh, Trustee Bejerano, remember this was a presentation about the, the different ways of financing. 
-hmm. and we have not gotten um, direction from the board specifically to go into the, you know, the cost mm -hmm. and, and the specifics, because then that will trigger us working with Cummings. We're looking for direction from the board, mm -hmm. you know, and because that in itself, right, all of that work, you know, we will have to, at this point, we will have to use bond money to be able to do that kind of analysis so that we can bring a, mm -hmm. a better informed um, presentation to the board. Got it. So it sounds like there, there was a recommendation, but that recommendation is based on just kind of like no, no data at this time, just a general recommendation of what hypothetically might be right. the, the best thing. Yeah. To get more into it, we would really need to hire a solar consultant who could actually analyze the individual sites. You don't want to put, if you have a part, a small parking lot and you can't put enough solar on there to actually generate enough power to make it financially feasible, that, that doesn't make sense. You, you don't want to just install this to install it. Mm -hmm. You you guys do have a lot of land, so you could literally put a field of solar out, um, which would be highly efficient. Um, and so there's you have a lot of opportunities, but it's really a matter of um, determining where and how much um, before before you can before you can actually answer any of the questions that you're asking. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, board member Chavez, yeah, come. Okay, so this is what I hear. The DSA and the ADA have to upgrade at the school as well as what wasn't mentioned was all the electrical problems that are at the schools that need to be fixed before any of this stuff gets in. So I also heard we're going to be paying more for power as well as that the pricing is not, isn't stable right now. So... I remember the, I think uh, the company was called Strategic or something similar like that. And, and that's when the, uh, the MOT the, uh, personnel, he said that there was, as well as the one who was giving the presentation, that there was a lot of uh, electrical that needed to be fixed. And, and it was crucial because these were all safety issues. So, can we get a price tag? Uh, we, we had one before, but can we get a current price tag later should the bond go through so that we're not doing um, study after study and paying for it when it may not be uh, a good fit at this time? Thank you. I I know that we have a lot of um, electrical upgrades on our list of projects that we're doing. And so we are currently analyzing the costs and the timing of doing the different projects um, and priorities. So th that is happening. And I know some of that is being funded by the bond. So that's a sort of a different project. Um, in terms of the electrical, in terms of the solar and the electrical, not that they're disconnected, but they're somewhat, dis it doesn't make sense, but they're somewhat disconnected because the solar will go back. You're not going to actually feed the school with solar. It's going to go and feed back into the grid and then it's going to come back in. So it's, a, it's not, that's just how it works. Um, and it has its, it feeds into the meter. So, uh, and your meter turns backwards. I mean, literally. So um, you, you can do one without the other. So I have another question. So when you're saying that it feeds back in the meter, so we're actually paying extra once it feeds in the meter to you. So you're the middleman. I mean, the company would be the middleman. Yes. So we're kind of paying twice. Thank you. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how is it that we're paying twice? Let's not just say yes because. Trish well, and so so what you're gonna so we're you're gonna so you're gonna it's it's, it's just like your home. You you install the panels on your home. Mm -hmm. 
unless you have batteries and you disconnect from PG&E, you are getting your power from PG&E. Yeah, okay. but with a, the with a power purchase agreement, you're going to go ahead and not pay up front for the, the equipment, correct? So you're, you're not, not going to pay up front for the equipment. Up. So my understanding is, is the way that it works is that, so on the power purchase agreement is you will pay the power purchaser and the power purchaser will get the credits and pay your bill gotcha. based yeah. on how much you actually use and the price that they've negotiated with you per kilowatt for your power. Cool. Does that make sense? And then the yeah, lease person, the lease person, it's going to be a little bit different because the lease is going to say, you're going to pay me no matter how much power you're going to use. Usually there's a zone. You can use like so much power. So you can go from one end to the other and you're going to pay me X amount per month as long as you stay within that zone. If you go over that zone, you're going to pay me more. If you go under that zone, I'm not going to give you any money back. That's usually the way that that works. And then they're going to pay PG&E and they're going to get the name credits. And so like if you do it, if when we do the power upgrades and, and we make the buildings more efficient, they're going to get those credits that you could have gotten if you bought the system yourself and installed it yourself. Got it. Thank you. Uh, board member, I so it sounds it's really so it sounds like it'll depend on which one we end up picking when that time is right. Yes, I do. Thank you for bringing that forward. Thank you, Trustee Vajano, for bringing it forward. You know, I mean, in regards to the climate change, right? Like, I know it impacts, and we can't wait. You know, we can't just sit and like wait until let's talk about it in five years, ten years. Um, so I really appreciate you bringing it forward, and. You know, obviously it's a lot of information and each one of those, I'm sure you can spend an hour on explaining each one of those um, options. And so I'm wondering, you know, kind of thinking uh, President Quintero, kind of like the task force meeting that we have for the teachers. Like, I wonder if somebody, and I don't know if, if it's appropriate, but to, for somebody to deep, you know, dive deep into it and then be able to bring back a report, um, to see what the best recommendation for us is, if that sounds. Let me. Cool. I'll I'll make my comments, and within my comments, I'll I'll, res I'll respond to that. Is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. No. That that's just what I'm thinking because I know that you know we can literally be here another couple of hours, and we're not making any decisions today. But I would love to know you know more in detail, so that when we do make that decision, we make the best decision, um, and we're not rushing into it. But at the same time. We do get to deal with, you know, talk about this mm -hmm. um, and the sooner the better. So that's it for now. Thank you. So I see your hand. I won't remember, I don't know. I have my own comments. Um, Vice President Fahm, you have any comments before I jump in? Fine. No, not at the moment. So we've been dealing with this item for, what is it, like a year and a half already, uh, if not more. And in all honesty, some of the reasons why it got derailed was because of a lack of, uh, uh, of, of knowledge. Certain people started raising questions and making claims that the buildings were going to burn up when, in fact, Terry just mentioned that the power doesn't even touch the, 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 the wires of our school district. It goes directly to PG&E, and then we go ahead and we get it back. Um, so it, do, it does go, it, it, we have to install a panel. And then it feeds back. So, I mean, it slightly correct, but does, but not very really. So it's feeding into pg and &E, not us, correct? That's correct. And so a lot of disinformation that took place over the course of a significant number of, of meetings that went on till three in the morning sometimes. And in all honesty, they were driven by political motivation. A, some of them was outright telling us, don't take action until December because of some election that was taking place. I wasn't part of that election, but it was very, very, just I, to a certain extent, it, it really messed up something that could have moved forward and brought us a significant amount of savings, um, all because of whatever ulterior motives some people had. And they were passing along incorrect information. I'm glad that we have now somebody who's providing us real information. 
uh, that we can base our decisions off of. Right, outright, we know that we are not going to be able to fund uh, a pro a program similar to e Eastside Union, where they went ahead and shelled out the, out of their billion dollar bond program, purchased up all their solar panels and did it on their own. It ain't going to work out that way for us because we don't have the resources to do that. So we can just scratch that off. Um, and uh, the whole leasing thing just sounds like it's not going to really pan out that well. It seems like power purchase agreement is going to be our only option. And we could go ahead and begin a committee and, and send it off for six months and then kill even more and more time. Or if we really, really want to do this right, we could move forward with a study session, get all the information that you need at that time, and then give some clear direction with some clear instructions for the administration to come back and, and let us know, uh, and or no, just clearly let them know, we want you to go out with an RFQ and begin the process of bringing back a partner that's gonna be able to make this happen uh, and that we can select. Uh, it can be as easy as that rather than uh, stringing this along for another year and a half and not never seeing it happen. Those are my comments and my suggestions. Uh, board member Bonham. Yes, thank you. I um, I want to first of all thank you. I agree with uh, a lot of your statement there. I, I do think there's some misunderstanding, and I again I'm open to be corrected if I'm wrong. But I get the sense that there there were people who thought like that the solar panels are going to literally plug directly into like the socket at the school, or vice versa that the school was going to plug like directly into the solar panels and. Could be wrong, but I got the sense that was some of the per perception. But what I was going to say is that um, I, I feel like what we've received tonight is kind of a baseline of information, kind of general information. These, these are the three kind of, I mean, maybe there's more, but these are three options available in general. What I would say, and, and maybe it's through a study session, but I was just going to say um, as an option to provide direction to um either staff or a program manager to now go out and and you know without obviously committing to anything bringing some more specific information for us to make a you know begin to think about any kind of decision specifically you know could we realistically afford to pay anything up front trustee quintero already stated what I believe to be the case, but maybe that's inaccurate, that time has passed, so maybe the situation has changed. But I would like to see, um, you know, sooner than later, something brought back to us that says, okay, here's the outright purchase. You can do X, Y, and Z, but you're not likely to qualify or you are likely or whatever. Here's the PPA. These are the, you know, whatever ranges that you might um possibly generate of, of savings or, or differences between what you'll pay them versus what you're paying PG&E, et cetera. So, so bringing us now back district specific information um, about what each of those different options might look like. And then um, at that point, kind of seeing where we stand. And, and again, maybe it's a study session, but I feel like I, I think there's a possibility to do this without the study session and allow for sufficient discussion, comment, and everything appropriately in a regular meeting. But um, I, I'm just throwing that out there. So, agreed. Uh, if we can do it without a study session, we can just get the data we should. Uh, Board Member Chavez, you got to come. I'd like to hear what Mr. Colvera has to say before I say anything. All right. Thank uh, you. Colvera, your comments. Yes, thank hey, you. Covero, before you start, uh, we had uh, data before, correct, on uh, site-specific data, solar solar stuff, but is it too dated? Can we rely on that to do anything? Yeah, I, I would recommend at this time, um, those data were, I believe, year and a half too old, so we might want to do some updates on that. And just based on the comments that I've heard um, to expedite this process, uh, the, the staff can actually issue an RP for an energy consultant um, to do the assessment and see the feasibility um, of any savings. Um, that's the first part. Um, in, in working with our attorney at DWK, their recommendation is to have a two, um, two part process. One is to issue an RP um, for an energy consultant to do the assessment. And the second part 
uh, would be to issue another, another RP for the construction manager um, to actually construct the solar, uh, depending what plant we go to, whether it's a uh, district funded and owned solar system or is it a PPA option? So those are some of the options that the board uh, can choose from. But the first step is, uh, or so desire, um, is to direct the administration to issue an RP uh, for an energy consultant and we can get that started immediately. Remember, Chad, with your comments. Uh, yes. So one of the things that Ms. Terry said that you could put them in the parking lots, but our parking lots at the schools are very small, but she also said that you could put them on the grounds. What would be your suggestion? What grounds would those be? Uh, Dr. Bauer has her hand up. Trustee Chavez, that's, we cannot answer those very specific questions right now because we don't know. That's why Colvera is recommending the board that we can get a, a, an expert to do those kinds of things. And the easiest way, you, all the specific questions we're going to say we don't know because we don't have the data to be able to respond. Okay, so I think, can I just ask a very specific question? How many square feet would Miss Terry suggest that we need in order to do a project that would be profitable to the district? The number. Uh so that's, that's where the energy consultant would come in because it really depends on how much power you need at each site and how much power can be generated, you know, depending on um, direction of solar panels. Like it's, it's just a little bit more complicated than saying 500 square feet. Um, it, it, it just is. All right. Uh, so this item is for information and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give in the time I'm going to suggest uh, is the will of the board to move forward with the RFP uh, for the energy consultant as well as uh, for the project manager or construction manager, correct? Is that what you said, Colbert? Yes, but that does not have to be done at this point. Um, All right. So the energy consultant is what you're looking for so you can get yeah. the information you need to, so we can decide what process we want to follow after that. Is that the will of the board? I do have a quick question for Mr. Chang regarding sure. that. Um, so with the energy consultant that we would um, try to procure, would they also look at um, Alan Rock's unique or, or specific financial position as well? Or they're strictly just looking at energy and needs and, and possibilities in that way? Um, I believe that can be included in their scope of work in terms of okay. to um, find funding sources that are available out there. Um, yeah, that are realistic to us given our situation. Okay, I would like that. Thank you. All right. So the, the direction would be given through consensus. Unless somebody is opposed to it, then it would seem that the board is supportive of moving forward with the RFP. Uh, board Member Travis, you got a comment? Uh, I'll, I'll wait. Thank you. All right. There's no, there's no motion here. It would just be consensus. The direction would be for that. So say no, if you are opposed to it. If not, then you got your direction, Mr. Chang. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Thank move you. on to item 7.02. Uh, approve and establish construction management service pool for district projects. Uh, Dr. Bauer. I'm gonna defer it to Colvera real quick. This is uh, part of the prog part of the uh, program to be able to start our summer projects. Yes, thank you, Dr. Bauer. Um, yeah, and we're respectfully requesting um, the board to support um, adding both Kleinfelder um, construction services and Sixth Dimension um, as the uh, construction manager in the pool. Um, that we're anticipating to use for uh, some of the summer projects that will be going on. Um, we did outline the process, how we came to select these two firms um, in the board uh, cover. So if you have any questions, I feel free to um, answer them. Thank you. All right, uh, do we have a motion? Motion. There's a second? Second. Motion by Chavez, second by, I don't know, is there any public comment? 
Uh, no public comment at this time, Mr. Board President. All right, if there's no further comments from members of the board, I'm gonna go ahead and call for a vote as I see you. As I see you. Uh, board member Pajano. Aye. Board member Ralora. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Vice President Palm. Aye. With myself with an eye, motion passed unanimously. Um, 7.03, approval of contract with Jones Hall's bond and disclosure council. Do I have a motion for uh, that action? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, all right, the motion by Vice President Palm, second by uh, Board Member Chavez. Do, uh, is there a public comment? <clears throat> I see no public comment at this time, Board President. No public comment, then I'll go ahead and I'll call for a vote unless there's further comments. Members of the board, seeing none, I'll call for the vote as I see you. Uh, board Member Bejarano. Aye. Uh, Board Member Ranuera. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Vice President Pham. Aye. Myself, voting nine. Motion passed unanimously. Um, um, all right. Oh, Mr. Going. President, yeah. if I may, given the given that it's 10 17 p.m., I'd like to uh, make a motion to extend the board meeting to midnight, given the uh, given the remaining length of the agenda. Second. Right. The motion by Vice President Fong, second by Board Member Chavez. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. I'll, Aye. Uh, I'll, call, I'll call it this. Vice President Pam. Aye. Board Member Bajano. Aye. Board Member Relora. Aye. Board Member Chavez. You guys moved all the screens on me. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Uh, myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. All right, we're here till midnight. Um, moving on to item 8.01, ALCAP initial findings presentation. This is an information presentation. I was going to check with Mr. Sanchez if there if there was a, a presentation for this. Okay. Yes, I have. We have uh, Garcia. I didn't see her. That's why I was like, oh, I thought it was. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Okay, I do have a presentation. Um, some an update on where we are in our LCAP process. Let me share. So good evening, um, uh, President Quintero and um, Superintendent Dr. Bauer and board members community. I do have an update on um, the, where we are in the LCAP process and some initial findings that I'll share with you tonight. Uh, I'll share some stakeholder input, trends and findings, some uh, survey information tied to our LCAP goals, and then the next steps in our LCAP adoption process for this school year. Very briefly, this is the timeline. Um, we spent March uh, doing most of the input sessions. Uh, we're here at the board update. And then um, as it follows every year, we'll have a draft and then um, take the LCAP to the board for a public hearing in June. And then in late June, um, submit it for approval to the board. Um, as we do every year, we do, look uh, to our stakeholders um, for input, um, variety of stakeholders, our parents, our community, our staff, our students, our union groups, our management team, and our advisory committees. Um, gather input from all of these different stakeholders um, in uh, different areas of our um, district community. I want to start with um, some just kudos to our, our team, our Alamoc team. Um, this come from the survey, the Panorama survey, uh, spring survey. Um, we don't always you know, hear um, the wonderful things that people say about us. And as I was looking through some of the survey comments, I thought, 
you know, I want to share some of these just so that our our team sees that their work is valued and recognized. So, you know, just a couple of these are, you know, we really appreciate all of the resources that ARUSD provides and makes us aware of. I absolutely love our school. My daughter has always been made welcome and I always feel respected and invited to participate. Those are two of my favorite, um, but just wanted to share some of the highlights of the survey data. So in looking through the forums, uh, I did put this together of some of the trends and findings. And, um, you know, a lot of these um, are items and, and trends that we, they're not new. You know, they're things that we have seen and uh, many of the things that we're already working on in our district. Um, and, you know, I, I put them on here because they were mentioned several times during our forums and input sessions and want to make sure that, um, you know, you all know what uh, our community is um, saying and um, asking for in terms of support in our LCAP. Um, and here are some of the main points, you know, tutoring and mentoring programs. Uh, one of the ones this year that has really come out many times is some type of intervention support during the school day for our students, um, uh, uh, after school and homework tutoring clubs, which is something that we did provide this year. Um, and, and a lot of uh, students took advantage of and um, wanting that to continue into the next year, targeted support for our newcomers, um, you know, in the way of a, a specialist that can provide that kind of support a um, lot on mental health and counseling, restorative justice. Um, our, our students did come back with some um, additional needs in, in terms of behavior this year, and that came out um, a lot in the um, input from our stakeholders. Um, enrichment, you know, which we hear a lot and which will be coming uh, with the ELOP grant. Um, and then for stakeholders, um, parent tech training and um, English classes was very popular this year um, in terms of trends. That is, these are from our forums and input sessions. And this is from our middle school students, which um, for the past few years, um, we've been um, making sure that we get their uh, input and share with you. Um, and for them, a lot of the same needs and some of the, the ones that stand out for me are, um, you know, wanting electives, um, which, you know, would be enrichment for them. Um, um, continuing with useful platforms that they have found that during the pandemic were useful to them, but they continue to see as useful, making sure that we keep those and we do have plans to keep those. Um, support for English learners, nothing different than what the parents and the community and teachers are asking for, and that's more targeted support for our newcomers. Um, professional doubt development for our teachers and uh, making sure that we have translation support for newcomers and the parents as well. Uh, and then in goal three, um, counseling. Uh, very appreciative of counseling and the support that they received this year. But of course, the need continues to, to really have even more support, maybe some support, a trauma support program, um, training for parents and teachers to understand the needs of the students and their mental health. Um, and then for their parents, they're asking also for English and technology classes for their parents training in the areas of SEL and mental health, um, providing some type of uh, incentives for parents to be more involved in school um, and also allowing them back at school um, on the campuses. Um, and then a lot of appreciation for the community liaisons and the interpretation services. So that's from our middle school students. And I'm gonna share a little bit of information from our Panorama survey, our spring survey. And overall, this is just the participation uh, a response rate that we had a little bit lower this spring than last spring. Um, 
which I find interesting because now we're back in person, it would seem we would have more, but you know, there's a lot that has gone on this year. So uh, we have seen some decline in some of these areas, but sure that we'll bring that back up again. So overall, uh, this is some of the survey, um, the areas that are L, kind of aligned with our LCAP that I like to share, you know, the climate of support for academic learning, um, the uh, knowledge of, of fairness and discipline, the safety, the sense of belonging and school connectedness. Um, and then, the, you know, the, for the students, the staff and the parents. Um, and, you know, overall, you know, there, there hasn't been a lot of change from um, the fall to the spring. There has been some, in some areas have gone down. Um, what I did this year though, was I wanted to share um, each area, but then I wanna share the trends um, with you because I did find some interesting trends. Um, for support for academic learning, has been pretty consistent. And, you know, th th this is one of the areas that traditionally we get um, the higher scores on. Um, students, staff, and parents, you know, all tend to rate this higher, which is great because that's what we're all about is teaching and learning. Um, and, you know, in terms of trends, when you look at, this is a new thing that I was looking at this year is results over time. This gives us five years of data um, from this panorama survey. And we've been pretty consistent in terms of parents and how they rate, rate us in this area of climate of support for academic learning. And then when you look at staff, it's pretty consistent as well. You know, it does have a, a little bit of uptick here and then it kind of levels off, but no, nothing drastic. When you look at the students' results over time, this is what I thought was interesting was that this area here that I circled um, was during distance learning. And it seemed that we did go up in ratings with students in elementary and middle um, during that um, time of um, um, uh, distance learning. Sorry, I forgot the name for a second. Um, so I thought that was interesting, oops, um, to look at and maybe dig down a little deeper. And, and you know, maybe because they were getting um, some intensive support during that time, you know, we were just, um, we, we did have a lot of support during that distance learning time for our students. And I mean, I think um, seeing this data really shows um, the additional type of support that we were giving them during that time. Not that it's gone down drastically, but it did go up a little. Um, and then in terms of safety, um, in students, um, the one area that, that I asked you to look at last year and it continues to be similar is this one area here in the middle um, that says they neither feel safe nor unsafe. And we have 17% of students at the elementary um, marking this area. And then we have 32% in middle schools. So I think that there's an opportunity to dig down into this data and to see uh, what it is that, um, you know, is, is having them rate themselves in this area as opposed to unsafe or safe. Um, in terms of staff and parents, um, I, I don't think that the um, data has changed much over the years. And again, I did do these results over time for parents. Um, if anything, we've gone up a little bit over the years and kind of maintained in the 90th percentile. Um, for staff, again, here's this middle area during distance learning that saw a big jump. Uh, and then hit, when we came back to school here in the fall, it went down a little bit again. So that was interesting to me. And then for students as well, um, for the elementary students went from 63% to 72 to 75. And then when we came back to school, it went back down again. Um, so definitely an area that we can dig into a little more.
and kind of see what, what's going on there and, and reasons behind that. For school connectedness, um, in terms of staff and parents, uh, it's been pretty consistent you know, throughout the years in the 90th percentile. And when we look at students again, um, we have this middle area again where, you know, yes, some of the time I do feel part of this school. And then for the middle school students, neither disagree nor agree when you ask if they feel part of this school. So those are areas as well that I think that um, could look into a little bit more. And as schools um, disaggregate their data and look into it, they can look more specifically at grade levels to see you know, if there's a certain grade level um, that is um, marking that area more often, um, boys versus girls, and kind of um, drill down into those areas a little bit more. And then over time, parents have been pretty consistent. Staff, again, in that distance learning time went up in this area of connectedness. Uh, and then students, um, the elementary students was pretty, it's been pretty steady all along, um, but the, um, the middle school students did take a little jump here during distance learning time in connectedness. So um, in terms of trends and findings in the survey, um, we ask parents and students to, we give them an opportunity to do, um, uh, give us responses to these questions. Um, and these are some of the responses that I pulled out that I think kind of go with some of the ideas that came out in the input sessions, um, you know, around mental care, mindfulness, meditation, self-care, mental health resources for all students would be very helpful. Um, Reestablishing of you know uniform expectations and behavior was also spoken about. Um, more extracurricular activities and programs, the celebration of diversity in our district, which I think goes along with some of the initiatives that we um, have been working on. A, a focus on anti-bullying education at schools, um, and then regular training and support for our new principals. In terms of students, um, there was mention of, of watching out for bullies, um, awareness of and support for mental health, um, improving our playgrounds and the equipment that they play with. Um, of course, kids mentioned food um, and um, some of the act fun activities that they would like to see um, included in their school day. So overall considerations, you know, looking at all of the input that I received and looked through and kind of put together, um, again, nothing that we haven't heard of. Some of the, the new things that I think that stand out are this need for the school day intervention support, um, probably the development of a multi-tiered system of support, an MTSS uh, support system. Um, let me see. And then um, the, again, back to the training for the parents and mostly in technology and everybody, uh, parents, um, staff members and students all mentioned the need for more technology training for their parents, um, basic skills and use of the platforms. Um, training in SEL and mental health and you know other things aren't very, Oh, and then the plan for bringing parents back on campuses so that they could be engaged in, in um, activities with their students. So next we have uh, in May, uh, a draft to the board. I will also bring a draft to our parent advisory groups and share with them some of the initial thinking. Uh, we'll have the public hearing uh, in June. Later in June, we'll have the adoption, and then we need to submit to the County Office of Ed by July 1st. Thank you very much. All right. So any questions from members of the board? I'll go ahead and take public comment. If, uh, all right. Uh, let's go with public comment. Yes, Mr. Board President, we have Ms. Lisa Gonzalez, Ms. Gonzalez, 
you have two minutes. Please unmute yourself. When you begin speaking, the timer will begin. Good evening. Um, I just want to say thank you, uh, Ms. Garcia, for um, for all the hard work that you'll be doing for the parent engagement and for um, listening to the community and giving this um, presentation. I really appreciate everything you you and the staff and the rest of the team has, has done within the forums and making sure parents are engaged within this process for not only this year, but for the last years. Um, I also want to... Um, Add, and I didn't say that, and maybe it's because parents don't really know about the ethnic studies programming and curriculum that is happening right now within our school districts. Um, I just wanna add um, a comment regarding that, like if we could add it within the LCAP um, goals and next steps. So this um, curriculum and program that we're implementing in our school district, which is a huge success. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody that proved it. Um, to continue and to actually give them um, and to be actually being able to get funded through through the years. Um, we know that the goal is to support and to uplift and to um, bring in, um, um, our um, high needs students, which are the ones that are learning um, about their roots, their culture and, and everything within the English studies program. Um, once again, thank you very much. And I hope that it um, takes in consideration and to be added, um, ethnic studies, my um, comment on ethnic studies can be taken in consideration and added to the, to the outcome. Um, have a really good evening. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mr. Board President, at this time, we have no more requests for public comment. Uh, members of the board, uh, board member, I know you had your hand over for yeah, just real quick, wanted to thank uh, Ms. Garcia again for her report and actually, uh, maybe I missed it, but I think we just got the board cover. I'm wondering if we could have the um, presentation sent to us. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's all. For Board Vice President Fum. Yes. Uh, well, I too want to express my uh, gratitude to Sandra for all the work that her and her team have uh, done in putting this together. Uh, you know, I have, uh, I noticed that. Uh, in in the in your presentation, you mentioned that there was a slight uptick in performance during distance learning, and then uh, uh, of course things have leveled out. And, you know, I kind of faced this as a college guidance counselor myself. But uh, um, do we suspect that there um, uh, as as, as students return to the classroom, uh, you know, a, a period of trauma has sort of e affected their, their how academic performance in, uh, in ways that we didn't quite foresee, right? Like for example, uh, uh, socialization in the classroom was stunted during the pandemic and then, you know, Children come back, and and some of uh, some of my visits uh, to the school sites, you know, um, uh, we, you know, we we've heard issues of children um, uh, having difficulty in uh, regarding, you know, resolving their own conflicts and so forth. So, you know, we we have a sense that. Uh, there are it, it. There is a sense that you know, uh, despite the you know, in spite of the uh, hard work that we put in, we are also you know. I wanted to make clear that we're also dealing with uh, psychological ish uh, aspects of children that are beyond our control. So if I can just comment, first I wanna clarify that the, the data I showed you was the survey data. So uh -huh. it was an academic performance, but it was the rating of our academic program. So that's, that's where I said we saw the uptick. So, I mean, definitely, um, I, I mean, I, I'm not an expert in this field, but I would <laughs> think that coming back to school has kind of been a little shock to everybody, right? And yes. So that's probably why you see some decline in some of the responses. Um, 
but definitely something we can um, drill down and, and look at a little bit more. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. For the comments. All right, so you know, thank you for that presentation. You're welcome. Uh, we've uh, taken public comment already, so we'll move on to item 8.02. Um, approval of resolution number 3821-22, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month 2022. Uh, do I have a motion for approval of this item? Motion. Motion by Chavez, second by? Second by, I'll second. Second by Vice President Fahm. Do you have uh, do you have public comment on this item? No public comment at this time, Mr. Board. No public comment, then I'll come back to members of the board. Any comments from members of the board? Seeing none, then I'll go ahead and call for a vote as I see you. Board member Bejano. Aye. Board member, Board Vice President Fahm. Aye. Uh, board, board Clerk Herrera Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself for nine, motion passed unanimously. All right, uh, moving on to item 8.03 is a uh, resolution related to Cinco de Mayo. Is there a motion? Um, motion to approve. Motion by Vice President Palm. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by uh, board, mem board member Barano. Do I have a public comment on item 8.03? No public comment request at this time. All right. Motion by uh, Vice President Palm, second by Board Member Bejarano. Um, any comments from members of the board? Seeing none, then I'll go ahead and uh, call for a vote as I see you. Board Member Bejarano. Aye. Board Vice President Palm. Aye. Board Clerk Aye. <laughs> Uh, board member Chavez. Aye. Myself, we're not motion passes unanimously. Um, item 8.04 resolution for National Teacher Appreciation Week. Motion. Uh, second. Motion by Chavez, second by Vice President Palm. We have a uh, public comment on this item. No public comment for this item at this time, Mr. Board President. All right. Uh, seeing none, then I'll call for any comments from members of the board. Uh, come, uh, Vice President Baum. Yes, I, I want to take this opportunity to express my uh, thanks and gratitude to all, all the teachers, guidance counselors, and certificated uh, faculty and staff in the Allen Rock Union Elementary School District. Uh, as I've always said, um, you are, you guys are all truly uh, the, you know, central casting. Uh, our schools would not work day in and day out if it were not for you. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, I urge my uh, colleagues to uh, approve the resolutions. All right. Uh, amen to that, uh, Board Member Arlora. Yeah, I just want to um, add to that, you know, thank you for your labor of love because you don't get paid enough. Absolutely. Um, thank you for all that you do. I remember all my teachers, you know, by name and, you know, just their different times in my life and how key they were in supporting my, um, you know, the, my learning. So thank you all for what you do. And, uh, you know, thank you for um, each child's life that you touch in the ways you do. All right, if there's no further comments, then I'll go ahead and call for a vote as I see you. Uh, board member Aranora. Aye. Board member Bejano. Aye. Vice President Pham. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. Um, 8.05, approval of the school sponsored field trip list. Mm -hmm. motion. motion. Sorry, motion to sponsor the field trips list. Okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Vice President Palm. Is there any public comment? No public comment. All right. Um, any comments from members of the board? See your hand is up, uh, Board Clerk Herrera. 
Okay. Sorry, that was uh, from Vice earlier. Pre Vice President Pong. Okay. Uh, I I wish our happy to approve this. And I wish our students happy learning out there. All right. If there's no further comments. I'm going to go ahead and call to what is it? See you, Board Member Verano. Aye. Board Member, Board Vice President Pong. Aye. Board Clerk Ronaldo. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. With myself, with an I motion passing unanimously. 8.06, approval of the quarterly report on the Williams Uniform Complaints. Motion. Is there a motion? There's a motion by Board Member Chavez, second by. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice President Pham. Is there a uh, public comment? No public comment on this item, Mr. Board President. All right. Uh, seeing no comment, is there uh, comments from members of the board? Seeing none, I'll call you as I see you, Board Member Bejano. Aye. Board, board Vice President Pham. Aye. Board Clerk Herrera Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. Uh, approval of SP18. SP 187 Comprehensive School Safety Plan. No to approve. Second. Approval by Vice President Fom, second by Chavez, by Board Member Chavez. Is there any public comment on this item? No public comment on this item, Mr. Board President. All right, seeing none, um, and I don't see any hands up for comments from members of the board. We'll go ahead and call for the vote as I see you, Board Member Bajarano. Aye. Vice President Fom. Aye. Board Clerk Carrera Lora. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. And myself, we're nine motion passing them. Moving on to item, item 9.01, CSEA Chapter 305, and Teamsters uh, Local 150, Salary Schedule Correction. This is for information only. Is there, any is there any comments from members of the public with regard to this item? I see no request for public comment at this time, Mr. President. Comments from members of the board? Seeing none, then we'll go, we'll go ahead and move on to item 9.02. Approved classified substitute pay rates effective April 15th, 2022. Motion. Motion by Board Member Chavez. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Vice President Palm. Is there any comments from members of the public? Uh, there is no request for public comment at this time. All right. Um, is there any comments from members of the board? Trustee Ch uh, board member Chavez, you still have your hand. Sorry. Never mind. No, no worries. Um, I'll go ahead and call for a vote, uh, given that I don't see any hands up. Uh, board member Bejano. Aye. Board Vice President Pham. Aye. Board Clerk Carrera Lora. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 9.03, resignations is from information only. Is there any comments from members of the public? No request for public comment on this item. All right, see no request, request for comments from the public. I don't see anybody's hands up here on the board. We'll go ahead and move on to item 9.04, which is approval of resolution number 41 21 forward slash 22 classified employees week May 15th through the 21st, 2022. Motion. Motion by Board Second. Member Chavez, second by Board Vice President Pham. Any comments from the public? No request for public comment on this item, Mr. Board President. See no comments from the public. Board Member Chavez, you still have your hand up? You have a comment? <laughs> okay. Uh, Board Member Farm, you have a comment? Yes, just uh, quickly. Um, um, a big thank you to all our classified school staff. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mentioned, te you know, Teacher Appreciation Week, in the Teacher Appreciation Week that the uh, Teachers were, you know, central casting. Our classified staff is technical theater. Uh, 
nothing 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 would function in the building without you but not just that but uh you know the cooks who uh serve our children in the cafeteria mm-hmm. and uh was it the secretaries who uh who uh work us at you know in many ways that valuable liaison sometimes or many times between <clears throat> uh s- student and teacher uh the paraprofessional who uh, keeps an eye out on uh child who might be falling a little bit behind in the classroom. Uh, I thank you very much for all your efforts. And so I urge uh, my colleagues to approve the resolution. Further comments from members of the board? All right. Uh, thank you to all our classified staff for everything that you do. You keep uh, things running, much appreciated. Uh, all right, um, we have uh, Motion to second. I'll call the vote because I see you. Uh, board member Behano. Aye. Board Vice President. Um, Aye. Board Clerk Ralora. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself, we're nine. Motion passed unanimously. Uh, moving on to item 9.05, accept CSCA Chapter 305 initial bargaining proposal to open negotiations for the period of July 20. July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Move to approve. I have a motion by Vice President Fahm. Second. Second by Board Member Chavez. Comments from the public? No request for public comment. See, no no comments from the public. No further comments from members of the board. I'll go ahead and call for the vote as I see you. Um, board member Bejarano. Aye. Board member, board vice president Fam. Aye. Uh, board clerk Herrera. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself, when I motion passed unanimously. 9.06 approved new management position for job description. Bond program manager. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by board member Chavez. Second. Second by board vice president Baum. Is there any comments from members of the public? No request for public comment on this item. No request for, uh, I don't see any hands up, so I'll go ahead and call for the board as I see you. Board member Bejarano. Aye. Board vice president Baum. Aye. Board clerk Herrera. Aye. Board member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. 9.07 received Teamsters Local 150 initial bargaining proposal uh, to open negotiations for you know, 2022 through 2023. Move to receive. Motion. Second. Motion by Our Vice motion. President Fahm. <laughs> motion by Vice President Fahm. Second by Second. Chavez. Yeah. All right. Uh, any, any comments from members of the public? Uh, no request for public comment on this item. All right. Uh, and see no further comments from members of the board. I'll call you as I see you, unless uh, your hand indicates you want to make comments, board member Travis. Sorry, it's still up. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, uh, board member Behan. Aye. Board vice president Fung. Aye. Board member, board clerk Carrano. Aye. Board member Travis. Aye. With myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. All right, uh, item 10.01, approve the spring board collaborative contract for school year 2021-2022, extended learning summer program. Do you have a motion? Motion. Motion to approve. Um, motion by Chavez, second, second. By, by Vice President Fahm. Any comments from members of the public? No request for public comment on this item, Mr. Board President. All right. Um, I don't see any hands up here, members of the board, so I'll call you as I see you. Board Member Bajano. Aye. Board Vice President Fahm. Aye. Board Clerk Herrera. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Myself, 49, motion passed unanimously. Uh, approval of item 10.02. Move to approve. Oh, motion, uh, second. 
Ah, uh, he beat you to it, Boromir Bor Bor Chavez. Boromir <laughs> <laughs> Barano makes a motion, second by Chavez. Do you have public comment? No public comment on this item. All right, I don't see any hands up for members of the board. So I'll go ahead and call you as I see you, Board Member Barano. Aye. Board Vice President Fong. Aye. Board Clerk Alora. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. With myself, only I, motion passed unanimously. Do I have a motion to approve item 11.01? Motion. motion to approve. Second. All right, that was a close one. Uh, I think Board Member Chavez beat you to it. Uh. Second, we're going <laughs> All right. Um, do I have any public comments? No. Nope. Public comment on this item, Mr. President. All right. Seeing none, then I'll go ahead and call you as I see you. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Board Member Hanano. Aye. Vice President Fong. Aye. Board Clerk Carrera Lora. Aye. Myself, Wood and I, motion passing in. Um, we're on the consent calendar. Uh, move to approve the entire balance of the consent calendar items 12.01 through 12.12. Motion by FOM, or by Vice President FOM, second by Chavez. I believe no, I'll, I'll second. I don't believe the motion was completed at the time of the proposed second. So I will second the completed motion. All right. <laughs> Sure. Motion by yeah. Vice President Tom, second by Bejano. <laughs> Board Member Bejano. Um, do we have public comment on this item? No request for public comment on this item, Mr. President. If none, then we'll go ahead and call you as a C. Board Member Bejano. Aye. Uh, Vice President Tom. Aye. Board Clerk Carrera Lora. Aye. Board Member Chavez. Aye. Myself voting aye, motion passed unanimously. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and recess closed session. The board will uh, recess the closed session approximately uh, about two hours after the, the stated time. Uh, we're going to recess the closed session approximately 11, and um, we'll resume after closed session, uh, possibly I, tomorrow. Yes, may I request a 10 minute break? Yes, I think that makes complete sense given the fact that we've been going. Several hours straight. So uh, we'll go ahead and meet up in closed session at approximately 11. Also, we, uh, public comment on the closed session item. Oh, yes. Thank you for that reminder. Um, do you want to go ahead and announce items on closed session, Dr. Bauer? Sure. Uh, item uh, 1301 Conference with Legal Counsel, as stated on the agenda. 1304, uh, one potential case as stated on the agenda. 1305, uh, labor negotiations as stated on the agenda. And 1306, public employee appointment employment, a title assistant principal. All right, um, we'll see you all in closed session at um, 11.09.
Do we have quorum yet? I think so. All right. Um, yeah, it looks like we have quorum. Um, Dr. Bauer, did you want to report out for closed session? Yes, under 306, public employment, uh, employee appointment. Uh, I am very happy to report that Ms. Julia Arroyo, Ms. Primavera Hernandez, and Cristina Sariñana have been a board approved to become vice principals in Alam Rock. Congratulations, ladies. Um, welcome to the team. And effective July 1st of uh, the next school year. All right, congratulations. Um, is there any public comment on 14.01? No, there's no public comment. Uh, comments from members of the board. I see your hands up. Uh, board member Bejano, board member Chad. I, I just have an agenda item for the next the next thing, not, not on this item. Oh, OK. So there's no public comment. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to future board agenda requests. Uh, board member, I don't know. Yes, I mentioned earlier this evening that um, I was going, and I've already spoken with Dr. Bauer and President Quintero. I would like to uh, request a report from staff about um, any safe uh, traffic safety education programs that we have used recently are currently using or may be feasible for us to start um, but i'll provide more specifics in an email to dr bauer and and president quintero thank you vice president Fong. yes i'd like to uh, request um uh an agenda item to uh, examine the feasibility of um Temporarily moving um, the board to the Russo McEntee cafeteria for the purposes of resuming in person meetings. All right. Uh, board, board member Chavez. Uh, I also asked Dr. Bauer for a list of all the renters that Alam Rock has in being and what they're being charged a square foot and a very specific list, meaning who's leasing, how many do we have, what property and what square footage and the length of the contract and every lease. Uh, and if every lease we have is at market rate and, and oh. I will be sending that email to Dr. Bauer as we discussed through our 101. And just to be clear, that's not an agenda item, correct? It's more of a request for information. Uh, okay. And, Cool. So then could I get that request and then I will formulate an agenda item? Uh, that sounds good. So shoot it over as soon as you have it ready. Um, all right. If there's no further agenda item requ uh, request, then we'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting at midnight, 12 a.m. Have a good one, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.